Hello, fellow watchers and enjoyers. Ash, the talent, and Piggy, the producer, here from Watching Wolford to bring you the Watching Wolford podcast, episode 76. Now, you may have seen, all right, all the videos this week, they've been a lovely little bit of pre-recorded, haven't they? And what, what can you immediately tell? I'm full of beans. <laughs> It's week one of the week off. It's the one day of work we got to do, and it's about one hour and a half of knobbery. Uh, today's podcast is going to cover week uh, 22 of 2024, all the episodes from the 10th of June all the way to the 14th of June. It's episode 76, and uh, yeah, the storylines we're going to be focusing on this week are... Honestly, three of these are sub-stories. There's only real two big ones this week, but it goes Ian's Man Flu, which is an absolute beauty of a little sub-story, just because it's Ian, and he's he's really good at being shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's on his gravestone. Ian Beale, quite shit. Not, not, not extremely shit, yeah. just quite shit. Mm -hmm. We have Kim and Howie's and Patrick and Yolande's return. They all touch down at the same time, pretty much. Uh, we have Stevie and Billy not getting along. And then finally, the main two. The main two that we're going to be talking about being Reese is Reese's secret being out. And Bianca leaving in a state. And finally, Keanu's funeral brings a mother face to face with her son's killer. Whoa, that's a bum prep. So that's a good addition of the podcast. Um, and as always, it's the podcast. The first half an hour shooting the shit. Half an hour on Woods EastEnders. First half an hour shooting the shit. Half an hour on Woods talk about the EastEnders. As always, mate, how have you been? How's the week off been? The week off has been great, guys. You know, I've been sleeping in, you know, I've been enjoying myself. I you know, don't have to record. This is good. This is good shit. Just sat there. Not recording, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yo, Piggy, you have some videos in your head that you want to do. Shut up, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's pretty much, that's been similar to me, really. It's like, ah, oh, should I do anything productive? Ah, well, you, you pulled me on. I'll, I'll finish watching Game of Thrones instead. I'll do literally anything else, but keep going. Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 been fun having the week off. Been getting a lot of fucking EastEnders stories on my Google feed. Uh, just going to switch to watch very quickly. Did you hear the story that uh, uh, the actress who played... Fuck off, Windows. I don't give a shit. He's yeah. fighting the system. Uh, did you hear the story that uh, the actress who plays Mel... Couldn't flog any of her posters or any of her clothes at a car boot set. No. A fucking Daily Mail, a Daily Sun. You know this is... Oh, it's it... absolute tabloid knobbery. Yeah, that's my new word, by the way. That's going to get used about 20 times. They fucking... She couldn't, like... She wore, like, a little hat and sunglasses. You know, like, every celebrity does when they're like, I don't want to be recognised. I don't want to be recognised. Guy, uh, I got it. Hold on, let me just uh, fucking. Guys, I don't want to be recognised. No recognising for me. I do not look like myself. Thank you very much. Don't <laughs> recognise me. I'm a celebrity. That's what I should just do now that I'm calling myself the talent. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, basic. So apparently, like she went to a car boot sale. And fucking was flogging some of her posters, like of her in costumes, you know. I believe it, her name's Well, like EastEnders costumes. No, no, not EastEnders costumes. Like, like in fucking superhero costumes and shit. Her name's like <laughs> T Tamza, isn't it? Isn't that her name? Like Tamsin Althwaite, some shit like that? Yeah, yeah. She, it was like, like she, wore, she wore like a little hat and sunglasses. Don't want to be recognised. And then obviously when she spoke, they were like... You sound awfully like this EastEnders character, man. Fucking, mate, the, ta the tabloids are ridiculous. <laughs> She's just trying to sell some of those shit in a car boot set. We all do it. 
<laughs> You've all been to a car boot sale. You're allowed to sell your shit at a car boot sale. May as well get some value off of it. Not that you get much. You're getting like fucking minus eighty percent, probably what you paid for it. But fucking, just just leave leave the woman alone. And and obviously they changed the tab like they're like she fucking couldn't sell it. The bitch, what a loser! What a fucking loser! <laughs> couldn't sell it. She can barely make. She can uh... barely make cash now since her acting career dried up. And I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! That's fucking unreasonable. That but like, is. I'm, uh, I'm just the laughing. Fucking, at... The fucking the fucking stupid bitch couldn't sell anything. I'm, just fucking car boot sale. She's not like fucking marking down the profits. Like it's just if any of it goes, it's good. If all of it goes, banging. If it doesn't go, ah oh, well, back in the attic for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it was like the, the, so, the, so like the tabloid was like, you know that joke I always make around Slater was like bloody insert group. Yeah, it was basically them going bloody women can't sell anything a car boot saying bloody woman. Like, they were like, her acting career is dried up, she can't get any work, she's fucking poor, what a loser, fuck her. <laughs> they like, try and put the article, I believe it was by the Daily Sun or something. Just have some fucking heart, you little rat bastards, what's wrong with you? <laughs> just... Like, come on. <laughs> fucking just... hell. Oh, I just... You're allowed to. You're allowed to fucking. <laughs> you're allowed to have a car boot sale for fuck's sake. No one's doing it about Danny Dyer. That's not a point. No, by the way, that's not like the media hates women. No, uh, I mean they do, but alternatively, just come on, just let the poor woman. It's like how when I when I had my old phone, it would give me a fucking like news feed, but for some reason this news feed algorithm. Decided that I was a really big fan of Amanda Holden. So it's just like, oh, you wouldn't believe what Amanda Holden's just done. I'm like, I, I fucking wouldn't, mate. I, I don't click on any of these. But by the end, because this was happening over a year, I was actually just clicking, like, fuck it, what's happening then? Yeah, if you're going to keep fucking shoving it in my face, I may as well fucking read it. Bye. Um, Bye. A, 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 very, a very gorgeous woman. Yeah, my... But also, never want to see a fucking... An article about her ever again, fucking pricks. Stop showing me Amanda Holden. Yeah, Google, not Google phones, but Android phones in general uh, are like that. Where, where if you have it on, uh, there's a little tab that says, "Oh, articles you might be interested." Uh, exactly. Uh, like the one, the one I got and I found funny was like Rishi Sunak said, like he didn't have uh, Sky TV. He only had fucking preview. <laughs> And everyone's just taking the piss out of him. And I was like, I read this article by the Daily Mail. I said, just like, I'm, was... I'm sure, I'm sure you could have afforded it, mate. <laughs> I'm sure you could have managed. Uh, I, I, it's right, not that uh, bad. Like, you know the That's not what separates the lower and the middle class. Is <laughs> an ITV for fuck's sake? <laughs> I, re I read the like, the, okay, the article headline is by the Daily Mail. Everything Rishi Sunak missed out on from the Simpsons to WF. <laughs> like, yeah, Rishi Sunak's going to sit down with his ball of gold reflex, watch fucking Hulk Hogan slam on, right? <laughs> At fucking eight years old. Yeah, the, 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 these articles are... I always get the fucking Daily Mail, Daily Sun fucking articles. Like. It is very fun to just see... <laughs> It's just, well, I I stop I stop looking at news for a decent chunk of time because if you're too invested, first and foremost, it's way too hard to be up to date on everything that's going on. Like it's just, there's no fucking point. Why why would you why would you even do that? Uh, you, there's not enough time, and no one should really be clued into everything. That'll make you fucking miserable. Alternatively, fucking paying attention to the news does make you miserable about all the bad shit that's going on in the world. Um, so it's been very nice to not really be that clued in. I do, I do, I do, I do love my, my like algorithm because I like, just like, do, do you want the bomb that's going on in Gaza? Do you want what's happening in Ukraine? Do you want what's happening in American politics? No, do you know you want Rishi Sunak on the four sky? That's what you really need to read. Richie Sunak was a poor boy. Like, 
What well, what he really meant to say is you couldn't afford Skylink, isn't? Oh no, it's Starlink. Fuck, never mind. Fuck it. Fuck it. The joke's dead. Move on. Um, one thing I did learn from the comments, uh, someone did tell me that autism is heavily linked to genes, and it it made me realise that I haven't paid attention since twenty nineteen about any autism stuff. <laughs> like you, you you could tell when I went for the referral. Well, when I got the referral sorted, it was 2019. Not thought about it ever again. I'm not needed to. Not really. Um, yeah, it doesn't help. We, we did record two videos kind of revolving around autism. And then I obviously didn't read any of the shit up about it. So now another video has just come out a couple of days ago. That's like, uh, see, I don't know if autism's linked genetically, but it probably is. It's like, well, uh, well all right, people have generally... <laughs> we 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 progressed, old man. <laughs> Stop keeping us in the fucking nineties, for fuck's sake. Um, but yeah, just and then you'll have some dickhead in the comments like, oh, bloody, everybody's autistic now. It's like, yeah. if we didn't know about it back then, did we? How many old people have never been diagnosed and never thought any different? Dickheads, a lot of them. Oh, um. Man. One story I've got to bring up from last week. It's actually sometimes I watch Rufus Rice and he goes through no st new stories. Yes, his name's hmm. Rufus Rice. Uh, and there's this new story. Do you live in Westminster? I don't know. He's, you know what? Sounds like an so He sounds like either the most farmer of farmer boys or like a fucking aristocrat in his fucking manner. Um, Hello, good heavens. I'm, Ru I'm Rufus Rice. <laughs> Here's the news. It's fucking... uh, and there was this story in America, I believe it was America, where this man was charged with manslaughter. Or not manslaughter, he was charged for killing his girlfriend. And his defence was, my cock was just massive. She choked on my cock. And like I'm like, that is the biggest blow. And he was like, I'll even show you my cock, man. I'll show you to prove you, like. I haven't murdered, but I do have a huge cock. Get tell me. us, tell us, you have no evidence without saying you have no no fucking evidence. <laughs> like what? How's that a defence? I have a huge cock. Like it's it's not exactly like you know the judge is gonna be like yeah we'll show us your dick then oh tight dick player like sick sick penis dude fucking like <laughs> there's there's no you murdered your girlfriend. Like, so stop stop trying to flex your massive penis. You've taken one of the only people who will have appreciated the penis out of the world. But you like, fucking piece of shit. Do you want to know how old this man is? 66. He's just... He's just mental, he is. <laughs> I just... I it's just, just fucking... Like, fuck, you, you killed a woman. I just love... It's not... The, it's not do, do it in jail, for fuck's sake. Not in the courtroom. Fucking melt. I just love the, the fact, like, his defence is... I'm a huge cock, mate. Do you want to see it? Like, right, yeah, the... that's, just, that's just him resigning, like... Yeah, well, see you inside. <laughs> I'm done. Uh... Fucking... Oh, yeah, and at the time of this record, the Euros will have started, so we need sound bites. That we're not going to edit out for when insert teams win. Ah, oh, and the first... Oh, shit, I need to forget. When is the first game? The first game is... Well, the first England game is... It comes out the night of. The, the, this, this coming out, it comes 12 hours after it's Serbia versus England. And Wait, it doesn't even work now. England's not playing. Like, England won! Yeah. Hey, England lost. Boo! Uh, he's he's lagged out. Hello, you're back. All right, hello. Hello. Did you catch any of that? Did it all lag out? Do I need to do that shit bit again? No, no. I, I was just singing "Karma, Karma, Karma" chameleon in my head when you were just doing that bit. All right. But yeah, England won. Yay! Boo. England lost. Boo. Boo. They booing? No, they're saying boo Ernst. They're saying boo England. Boo Lynn. Um. See the issue. The issue with my sense of humour 
is when you mentioned the the woman getting murdered, and you said manslaughter, and because you had a fucking grin on your face, which makes you look like a callous piece of shit, I went, all right, time to deflect. After hitting with the old manslaughter, I hardly know her. There we are. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I love those shit jokes, though. It's, I feel like they're they're a part of like of like br- British culture, of just the really shit garbage jokes that you just always have to make. The other one I read is that apparently, like, uh, uh, there was this who, and obviously they couldn't get pandas, so they just dressed people up as pandas. Apparently, there was this what? Uh, Apparently this zoo, like in China... Or Japan, oh, the zoo, yeah, all right. In China or Japan couldn't get, like, pandas because, you know, they're going like, extinct. Yeah, they well, because they're fucking idiots, that's why. Yeah. Pandas have, like, a... Look, me and you don't really have, have any proper life skills or anything. We're pretty garbage. I like to say I've got some, but if you put me out in the wilderness, I'm dying. They're about as good as, a, as us. No wonder they're going extinct. They're fucking idiots. Um, Pandas, would you like to breed? Nah, I'd rather just fucking do a roly poly and get stuck in a hole. To... Like, all, all right, yeah, but you do need to, you know, your people are dying. Ah, but I, I, I did have a sneeze. I'm not feeling it really. It's just there we are. Classic, classic YouTube meme. The old so, panda sneeze. So like, they just dress people up as pandas, apparently, or animals. I just fucking put them in a zoo. I'm like. You only need to get paid for that, lad. Imagine fucking. And th- there's that fucking dickhead who's who's doing who's being a dog for free. <laughs> He's fucked himself in the market. <laughs> He's not even doing it properly. At least if you do it, get paid. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Yeah, I guess he and been... There was a story. He wanted to become a different animal. Now he went. All right, I've done the dog bit. <laughs> I don't remember what animal it was, so we can just make it up. But fucking, honest, yeah, I'm not really feeling being like a like a dog anymore. Sound. A <laughs> Maybe he and he and the guy with the massive penis should should uh, meet up. You know, straight fucking swan neck in it. <laughs> um, All like... innocent. No, no death involved, please. Thank you. Fucking imagine, imagine just. I'm done being a dog. Do you know what I want to be now? A dodo bird. That's what I really want to be. A fucking. I'm trying dog to figure bird. out what the fucking great, the the great ridiculous war in like New Zealand with like the kiwis. Not the kiwis. The kiwis are the people. What are the birds? What is it? Okay. The New Zealand farmers war. There was there was a bunch of farmers. <laughs> Come on. Please tell me I'm actually getting the proper one. Uh no, I'm just seeing a civil war. There was a big war, I swear it was, it was in the New Zealand. <laughs> where they were having to fight like dodos or some shit. <laughs> because they just ran ragged the fucking they just absolutely wrecked the farmland. Uh is it is it dodo? Dodos are stupid birds, so I'd assume it would be. Like Um. Oh, who the fuck! I don't know. Someone or someone will know in the comment section. That's enough for me. I would tell the story, but I don't have any of the details, unfortunately. Uh, aren't they? Aren't they trying to bring back their daughter? Or her? I mean, I feel like anybody brings back something from extinction. That's some absolute straight bowler shit. I mean, yeah, true. Like, imagine being the fellow who brought back. Imagine. Imagine you're know, the guy who's trying to conserve the pandas, but they can't. That the, the, they just won't. They just won't do anything. So they go extinct. You're like, don't worry, lads. I brought them back. Here's a panda. Oh, they've died, and it's over again. It's like, no, oh, yeah. I can't make it. It's like, it's like the. Uh, is it Echo the Dolphin? There was a fucking game made about it, but it's like this really messed up story about how. A, a doctor and a nurse and like a group of people were trying to get a dolphin to learn how to speak because obviously dolphins are supposed to be the intelligent sea creatures so intelligent they're absolute fucking pricks <laughs> absolute nobbers 
Um, but like, then it ended up being like they ended up giving the dolphin some LSD, and this dolphin like grew an attraction to the nurse, and like, oh, it's fucking, it's absolutely ridiculous shit. <laughs> like, the Echo the Dolphin case is absurd. There we are. It, yeah. It, 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 it was, I forget when the penguin was fucking gone. He was in Japan. Uh, but this penguin, like, he, he couldn't find a lover. He couldn't, like, find a lover in his life. And then obviously this anime came out. <laughs> Haven't we all? He, this anime came out, and obviously for promotion material, they, they put the anime girls in the fucking... Like, not, not like they put cardboard cutouts of the anime girls in the sanctuaries. And this penguin just fell in love with one of the anime girls. He just fell in love with her. And, like, they... Uh, haven't we all? And then, like, he... Like, they, they even got married, I believe. And then when he died in, like, 2017, they even went, rest in peace, you're with your lover now. Or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fucking point of this? That's <laughs> just old. Just, 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 just grow up. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? It was like how there was a guy... There was a guy who, I think he was dying of cancer. And then, I think he, he got married to, like, a sex doll, or a... Like, he, he was an attractive fella. Like, he had cancer, he looks better than all of us combined. Like, he's an absolute stud. He got married to a sex doll. Um, and, you know, he didn't have much family around him. But then, the funniest bit is the article. Is, like... <laughs> The, the the funniest people of the article talking about it just absolutely ripped him to piss because they, they made a poll at the bottom. They said, you know, option one is, like, you know, uh, uh, is it okay? Yes or no? And then the third one was, it's Adam and Steve, not Adam and Robocop. So it's like, fucking, he's dying. Don't you don't need to wreck him on the fucking internet, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> what's Robocop done to you? <laughs> Put him in Robo Carna. Oh, <laughs> like, what are they done to deserve that? Fucking poor bastard. He's already dying. You don't need to stab him on the way down. It's. I'm just imagining the other you know, fucking the famous Ric Flair, like where he's holding the phone, but he's crying. Like if people have edited, it. I'm just imagining him on his deathbed, like, oh, I'm getting some positive comments. It's Adam and Steve, not Adam and Robocop. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> straight crying. Just fucking crying. Pissing on himself. Uh, yeah, fucking. Oh, mate. The, yesterday, I had a Chinese for the first time in years. Yeah. Um, Absolute fucking. Absolute straight fire. Incredible stuff. See, the first time I had a Chinese, I, w I wasn't ready for all the grease. And it, it was beautiful. It was like, oh, this is all great. But the main issue is I woke up at, like, tw at midnight and I was just bloated to fuck. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, bloody hell. I'm either going to shit out my entire ass or throw up everything in my body. It was the latter one. But this time, absolute fucking great stuff. Had a, had, had a, had a house special chow mein. Delicious. You know what's fucking great about the house special? So they put every fucking thing in there. There was some duck, there was some beef, there was some chicken. I'm like, oh, you have to pay extra to get some of these. Who wants just... I don't, I'm not going back to, like, beef now. Why would I do that? I can get it all on the house special. And then I had some, uh, some uh, pork balls and sweet and sour sauce. Mm. Absolute banger. Didn't yeah. throw up afterwards as well. A Chinese is a good, it's a good place, like, it's a good fast food place, like, but obviously, again, it's just someone who isn't from Britain or Ireland won't understand the concept of a Chinese, because they go, oh, Chinese, so it's China, China food. No, the no, lad. The concept of a fucking Chinese. No, lad, it's, it's just a bunch of Brits and a bunch of Irish people sat in a room and went, we're going to add spice and shit to this, and it's going to be called Chinese food. Oh. I mean, about most of my local Chinese places or just Asian food are ran <laughs> by yeah, yeah, they usually people ran. from the culture. Yeah, Not they're... just like a fucking gammon, just like, oh, yeah, yeah, you want some fucking chips there, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
have some fucking duck spring rolls. Yeah, it is. Fucking, All right. I have a Stella for free. Oh, go on then. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, um, fucking. I had somewhere to go from this. I completely lost my train of thought. Um, fuck. Where'd that go? No, yeah, it was, uh, it was nice. It was the first time I had a Chinese in years. It was great. I'll fucking get it again. It's absolute fantastic stuff. Uh, we, we, we tempted, we tempted one of the one of my brothers with the idea, like maybe we'll get some like steamed buns. Excuse you. Maybe we we'll get some. <laughs> if I, I'm a, <laughs> hold on, hold my fucking. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking deck this curtain a second. Hold on, Jesus! He's got the fucking, fucking head, buddy. Fucking pipe down, motherfucker! I've got shit to do. Um, that we tempted my brother with the idea of like, you know, those like steamed buns, which are absolute fucking fantastic stuff. You know, the really like, it's like dough, but it's not dough. Oh, it's got really good filling. Like, oh, what we what we got was not. <laughs> I think what we got instead was like. I guessed it was like it was like the like prawn toast or whatever the fuck, which it could have just been like a weird sesame grease bread. I don't know. <laughs> could be entirely different. Um, there were some wings, which I love me some wings. I'll take it. They were the tiniest wings known to man. I'm not sure what fucking chicken they got that from, but it was a fucking. It was it was like this, and I'm like, found. Oh. Um. And the other stuff, yeah, no, it's pretty good. I, I that was that's a report from my Chinese. It was pretty good. Oh, mate, the fucking the worst bit about being in a little fucking, I'd say working class town. It's kind of like kind of like a fucking retirement town, mm-hmm. and that like yeah, that's fine. But it's also filled with a lot of poor people. <laughs> but there's also a lot of old people and a lot of middle class. Um, and the issue. <laughs> Is that without fail, the amount of times I've heard one of the fucking racist people do the whole spiel where they do the fake Chinese voice, like ah, oh, but when when you ring up to get a chat, you just you just can't bloody understand them, and then just straight racism without their fucking mouth, just making up words, and it's uh, the amount of times I've had to hear that shit is ridiculous. Uh, and like. The main issue is usually, look, usually when you have a joke, usually it works. And, you know, uh, uh, we all have those jokes that we all fucking bust out every now and then because it's like, all right, guaranteed laugh. <laughs> the issue is the mate who tried to tell me this one, he didn't, he didn't understand that I wasn't picking up what he was putting down. So he fucking did this for like five straight minutes. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Just imitating the phone call, and obviously he's doing the, the he's doing his like oh, hello, and then obviously what follows, which you can imagine. I'm not gonna fucking do it. Um, hello, there you go. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. There you go. There's your little teaser. Um, and he he did this for like four straight minutes, and I'm like, fucking hell, why am I here? What have I done to deserve this? See, the answer's nothing. See, my Chinese is different, my local Chinese. Well, we have three of them, but the one that's closer to me... <laughs> uh, like... Oh, I gotta the, put that, that little detail in there. The one that's closer to me, like, I walk in there to go, Hello, how are you fucking doing, pal? Usual spice box with extra chicken. I'm like, oh, oh, stop it. Go on. Stop it. I, is it a two year old? I like how you one? getting a Chinese is... Give me some fucking chicken. Give me some chicken and chips with spice. <laughs> yeah, I walk in. They're like three or extra. I know, and I'm like, no, I can't. Okay, go on, go on. Not, 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 not getting anything else. Not getting like a fucking, you know, get getting a chow mein. Getting some. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I'm not very seasoned. It's like the one time I, I I got an Indian, but I didn't really want to get curry, so I got steak and chips. Fucking terrible. <laughs> fucking garbage. Uh, obviously, I got Nando's over the weekend because I've seen Lord of the Rings. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the Nando's. And so, so you wanted to imitate uh, the Ayasaron with your ass. 
There we are. That's the joke there. Nando's um, in it. I got a lemon and herb chicken burger. My dad took the piss out of me because I started eating the chicken and obviously when you eat it, it falls apart in the burger, like it falls onto the chips. And yeah, yeah. I go, oh, I just put a bacon with it. So I was having, that's not fucking bacon, you idiot. That's chicken. And <laughs> just like, I fell out your fucking burger. Uh, I, I, I bit into it and I was burnt. And I was like, oh, mm, yeah, okay. Mate, the first time, fuck it. This this whole opening skit will go as long as it needs to be. Who cares? It's it's been a week. We'll we'll, we'll have an extra long podcast. It'll be fine. Yeah, uh, we are not talking about EastEnders right now. <laughs> um, fucking the first time I went to Nando's was the first day. It was one of the first proper days at six form, and you know, all a bunch of people, all terrified, going to a new place. Sound, fucking. So we met 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 this friend group. My mate would later go to like be one of their boyfriends, um, and I ended up flirting with all of them, of course. Um, and it, it was great the first day because I seem confident and cool, and people don't know me, so everybody's like, "Oh, hello," and I'm like, "Hi," <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's great." So we we. We got bundled into one of the, one of their like mum's cars, but obviously there wasn't a, there wasn't much room, so I had to fit in. I had to like sit on someone's lap, which was a good time. Um, Trying with and Sad. she was fuming because I'm either like, oh Jesus fucking Christ language I'm like fuck you know, blood, bloody hell who said that it wasn't me. So we get to Nando's, and I've never had Nando's before. My spice tolerance was fucking no. So I'm like, ah, fuck it, lemon and herb, easy. I'll, 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 I'll take like, I think I went for a medium spice. <laughs> Let me tell you, they do not pack. A, they pack a fucking punch. So it is me trying to get to know this whole group of girls I've never met before. And I'm like, fuck, tears just pissing out of my eyes. Like, it's not funneling out the fucking nose. Like, oh, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, so. Oh, oh fuck. It's not, let me tell you, it's not a good way to meet new people. Uh, I obviously, like, I, I don't know why, but obviously when I order a Nando's, I always get, like, chicken. Probably a burger, <laughs> like, chicken burger. Yes. Chips. Uh, chips oh, I thought, I thought you, you were going to be proper outlandish. Well, now I get Nando's, I always get chicken. Is, do they do anything else? I always get, I also get sweet, I get like uh, the, the the salty chips, like they put the spice on. And I get yeah. mashed potatoes, because you're not healthy. Um, that's my usual, mashed potatoes. Yeah, all right. well, why are you getting mashed potatoes when you get the Nando's, for fuck's sake? You know, you gotta have the chicken. You gotta have the chicken. Yeah, but you're you're getting double the fucking potato. Exactly, I'm Irish. I have to dig into Fuck. the stereotype. <laughs> Mate, someone takes your blood. It's gonna be pure vodka by the time that's fucking done. Straight potato into the veins. What? You don't need chips and mash. I can pipe down you. you don't need <laughs> fucking chips and mashed potato. Fuck's sake. You just get just get one. Ah, uh, it's like get two sides for an extra quid, and I'm like, oh. Although, I have put roast potatoes in a sandwich before, so. <laughs> oh, the, the in sync just. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> Fuck it, no. We you know, synced up properly. You know that, yeah, you know everybody fucking, knew. You know that meme where it's like cock watch? That's fucking a potato watch. Just fucking. Bleh. Also, I will say that I don't like mashed potatoes. Yeah, I, I, it's he, just hot. I don't. They're fucking boring. I feel like you get more. I feel like you you get bored faster than you get full. It's like oh fucking. Oh, only fucking. T- only twenty more spoon. Twenty more forks worth of fucking boring plain shit. Can't say I've I had particularly good mashed potato, but like, nah, man. Give me, some, I'll take literally any other version of potato, other than fucking mash. Um, but also I do get a lovely. Like obviously, hopefully when we go to Emily, and hopefully we'll get a nana. Well, I say we'll get a nana. Slater got no one again, and I know that's basic bitch. Uh, 
and then like someone will complain to me for fucking getting mashed potatoes. I'll just be sat there like, okay, what do you want, Slater? Okay, this is what you want. What do you want, Ash? What do you want, Piggy? Then I just see Ash fucking over the fucking little, like the little menu reader, just like, go on, what do you want? What do you want, bitch? Go on. Yeah. You want mash? I mean, I- I mean, I can imagine. I'm just, I'm just getting everything in a fucking doggy bag. I'm gonna be too anxious to eat anything in Wembley. Like fucking. There is, there is, <laughs> can I, can I bring it to my room? Can I get Uber Eats to the hotel? Sound. <laughs> just fucking you, just like, ah, come on and enjoy the meal out. Can I bring this home now? Yeah, you can. Go <laughs> just text it's, one I'm not bite. feeling good. Just text one bite and it's like, I need to go. I need to go back to the hotel. Well, that's the issue with the fucking like antidepressants is all of the fucking all of the fucking anxiety that I did have which should be all over my body now just resides in the fucking pit of the stomach so it's like oh sound I just feel like garbage now like I'm out I'm not feeling as anxious as I could be but I, food isn't isn't necessarily my friend unless I'm comfortable but to be fair I did reach a point where I'm not really anxious when I go outside so you know, we're all making strides. I just, again, it's only two months away, like, at the time of recording this. It is, like, it's fucking mental that this is happening so soon. Because I'm, I'm not prepared. Like, if I'm being really honest with you. Like, I've done this last year, but I'm not prepared to do it again. No. Because, I, I, like, there's a joke I make where, like, there's a wrestling match that's going to go on too long. And I'm going to look over. I'm going to see Slater, like... They're gonna look beside me, and I'm gonna see Ash being like, "I want to go out." <laughs> but and he just have to stay. It's it went for twenty five minutes. You don't understand the story. You need to understand the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just you sat there like. I don't. I, mean, I, I I've always generally. That's uh, how I said before. Anticipation is is my biggest anxiety. The build to it's worse than doing it typically, and that's the hardest part. But like fucking, <laughs> fucking, hell. I ain't ready. Uh, I'm probably. But I'll just spend the next two months not thinking about it, which is good fun. I'll probably buy some pair of shorts. Cause I'll probably be wearing shorts when this event comes around because it'll be fucking August and the heat will be unreal. You know. Yeah. I say that I get the short just that's pissing rain. Ah oh, bollocks. So I go when I went to Cornwall I went, ah oh, be hot down there. It's, it's windy as fuck and it rained the last day and I was just like shorts the whole time, like ah oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Didn't even bring a blanket for fuck's sake. The last night I had to sleep in the in a te- in a hole in a tent. Like with with my wet t shirt for a blanket, it was miserable. Cool. And that that was that was, and that was Jake's probably funnest memory of that festival because, well, we all we all know me. I don't get rattled that easily. You know, I I'm pretty composed. I I internally struggle. That's how I work. But I was I woke up and I was fucking fuming. <laughs> like I was just like, what the fuck are they shouting? Fucking pricks! Fuck off! I was just swearing up a fucking storm. And then you just kind of looked at me and just burst out laughing. Went, "Why are you so angry?" And I went, "I don't know, mate. <laughs> I slept in a fucking hole with a wet t-shirt. Fuck this. I don't even know if I had my pillow at that point. I was cummed on. But... Hmm. Was that was not the pillow that was cummed on? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's it's why it, is, it, it obviously we do B C after C. Not that I knew, because my mate, like, fucking... <laughs> For some reason, he'd really internalised it as a struggle. So, obviously, I was staying in his tent. Um, and he had, he had a girl in. But I didn't fucking... There was no time to fish my pillow out. And so he, he had a little fucking... Bit of, bit of spaff on that pillow, which... I didn't give a fuck. I wanted my pillow. I was tired. I want to sleep. I don't fucking care. I didn't notice anything. Fine by me. Who the fuck cares? And I only learned like six months later <laughs> when he was crying to me. Like, oh, mate, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, mate, what, what have you done? You're right. You know, is everything okay? 
Oh yeah, yeah. It's just you know you 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 know board masses like tears just pissing out. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll spunk on your pillow, mate. It's like, oh, what do you think I was gonna do? <laughs> Have a bit of your own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck it. What's what's? I'm not gonna be like. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I'm fucking care. Got washed immediately. Fucking. If I don't fucking. Who cares? Fuck. <laughs> fucking. Just but it's just the fact that he came to me like crying, like, mate, I got something to tell you. You're not going to like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, your pillow. <laughs> Sound. <laughs> Call me here then, bastard. Smash. No one disrespects my pillow. Yeah. Um, it's good times. It's good times. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Who's gonna spaff on your pillow this time? Are you not fucking bring... ho- uh, hopefully nobody. <laughs> no, uh, actually, yeah, if you're not bringing a pillow. It'll be the fucking hotel fucking pillow. Someone yeah, why, why why do I bring my pillow to Wembley? <laughs> this is my <laughs> pillow. No one can use it but me. I need this pillow, and it's the fucking right. It's the Carlito pillow. It's the fucking Carlito pillow. It's like no one can use this pillow but me. I die with this pillow. I ride with this pillow. I can only use this pillow. <laughs> it's like, okay. 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 Fucking but yeah, as... Uh... Just imagining the fucking train conductor coming over and like, oh yeah, I just need to... Just... I see you have a car up and get away from me. My fucking pillow. Get away from me. Uh, okay. Yeah, but fucking... The tra- to be fair, that was the same festival where I got so high I forgot where I was. Like, for some reason, on the first night, we decided to, to smoke up a big fucking joint. And it's like, all right, sound winner. Got high as fuck. But my mate Ruben, who was, you know, the he, he was he was the, the, the pillow destroyer. Um, he fucking, he smoked so much that he slept for like 16 hours. And, like, he woke up halfway through, had the longest cramp known to man, which had me buckled to no end, because he's just like, oh, shit, he's awake. Ah! So, you're right, mate. Ah! Just fucking just screaming because of this cramp. It's buckled me. <laughs> um, but, the, you know, we smoked so much weed. Um, and I've never been higher. It was also the first time I, I used a bong properly, and holy shit, that's fucking changed my life. Um, fucking, we would just take turns. We saw, saw a mate smoke so much that he like he he took a he took a hit, you know, he just, just fucking smoking it all in, getting it all in. You just saw his eyes just walking like, fucking, <laughs> does he realise that he's had he's had the smoke to no end? But I was sat in this fucking tent, steaming my tits off. We were all high as fuck. But I was so high, I'd just sit there. Then my mate Ruben would, like, fucking tap my leg. And I'd be like, oh, who fucking did that? And I'd be like a dog on watch. Like, oh. <laughs> but he'd, he'd do it. He'd do it with intervals of, like, 20 seconds, just long enough that I wouldn't, that I would immediately, it would be gone out of my fucking mind. So he did that for about three hours straight. Ooh, who did that? <laughs> it's for me, just fucking zoinked out of existence. Uh, there we are. These are the festival stories. My, my festival experience is different. Obviously, my, my fucking famous one is the, uh, when, when we couldn't find the tent after our shift, someone like, so, some mad just started going, here, tent, 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 here, tent, tent, tent. The mere tent, the mere tent. He's trying to find his fucking tent using his torch. Like, and uh, there was obviously this guy who was fucking on, like, he was on some LSD. And we were all just sat around the campfire. Like, we were just sat around the camp. And he just goes, yeah, yeah, don't mind this guy. He's just high as a kite and he can't find where the fuck his tent is. Yeah, so we yeah. all laughed at him. So he couldn't find his fucking tent. Fucking, there's just some, there's just some, some good shit from it, like. I saw one guy just eat shit over some tent pegs, just fucking full flat on his ass. Uh, it's absolute gold. 
Um, obviously in the mornings. I mean, people who go to festivals are a new fucking breed. Like, I feel like if you go to a festival, you you gotta be slumming it out and you gotta be tenting it out. Like, there, there's a level of exhaustion that you never reach until you're you've been at a festival for five days and you're like dead on your feet, like yeah, fucking. Like you, you rise like a fucking vampire out of coffin. Like, oh, we got to do it again, bloody hell. <laughs> um, but fucking, I, I once again lost my fucking train of thought. I was just dead on my feet a lot, but it is great fun. Obviously, in the mornings or like in late at night after everybody's gone to the show, you just get some fucking. <laughs> You just get some people lost. So one of the mornings we got some be like, Sarah, Sarah, just screaming it through the field. Just Sarah, please. And then we heard Sarah who went, fuck off. (laughs) And then he went, all right. (laughs) He's been been crying like a fucking cat at three in the morning. Like, meh. Sarah, <laughs> and just denied immediately. Fantastic stuff. Uh, obviously, like my best full experience was ruined because I had to switch shifts with someone else, and basically this barman, I told him I could not work the fucking pills. T- t- I can stock shelves, I can do everything else. I just can't make rings, and I can't, I can't do the tails. I can fucking, I can fucking stock the shelves. I can go get stock. I can. You know, I can do yeah. anything like that. And he's like, no, you have to do the tilt. And like, I was fucking up the tilt. And I was like, why, 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 why are you fucking up the tilt? And I'm like, I, I told you, I can't work the tilt. So I was like, I'm <laughs> breakdown. And, and then I came back about one in the morning and I went, where the fuck did you go? And, like, and then, the, then the, 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 the hospital lads had to pull them aside and go, he had a breakdown. And then, <laughs> I was br- then I was brought to Waterford General Hospital. And... And I just remember sitting in there from one in the morning watching SummerSlam 2022 and, like, waiting for me to be seen. And then fucking the minute Brock Lesnar hates Roman Reigns by a tractor, like, moves to, used the tractor, I just sat there fighting the one, like, <laughs> And everyone else... <laughs> he's definitely having a breakdown. Just, just fucking giggling. I mean, like, these, these, like, the And I remember it so well. Because uh, Virgin Media like had on the TV, because like, obviously you know in the hospital they had the TV on. I just remember there was one ad that played, so I'd be like, tonight, this this program, and then it's like on one more match, <laughs> and then like and then it'll be like, oh Becky Lynch, I'm gonna fuck you up tomorrow night on Raw. I'm gonna fuck you up. WWE Raw on Virgin Media. Tune in at three p.m. on Saturday. And that would play like over the course of hours until the TV turned off at like four in the morning. So you'd just be sitting there. I'd be watching SummerSlam, and it's like, Becky Lynch, I'm gonna fuck you up, you fucking bitch. I'm gonna fuck <laughs> you right up. And then you just have the people just sat in the hospital. Just be, ah, here we go. <laughs> uh, just that buckled me. I say that there are some dark times of being in a fucking field. I I did NCS. If anybody has done NCS, it's like four weeks of summer and it's shit. <laughs> like, it's a fucking garbage. It's not good. Um, the first week you go to like this adventure place and it's cool, and but it is also a bit depressing because it's really mid. Um, you, you, because you spend the first week out in a fucking field and you occasionally do some exercises. Like you did did some shit called like Jacob's Ladder, where obviously the whole thing of Jacob's Ladder is because he had to try build to heaven. At some point, the fucking planks ran out because you had to get higher and higher. So the gap in between is larger and larger. I don't like heights, me. I'm not very good at heights, but you get harnessed up. But my choice of clothes were jogging trousers. And let me tell you, those harnesses are the most flattering things I've worn in my life. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm walking around just like fucking, just just like a triangle, just like, so let me just squeeze this right out. And I got some very, very strange looks, some very envious ones as well, <laughs> from myself. <laughs> Why does it not look like this when I'm at home? Um, but because. Once again, you're spending a week in this fucking field and it's you, you're going out of your mind. 
a fucking... Obviously, we all just started making noise in the tents at night. And everybody's just making fart noises and because we're all fucking losing our box being children. It's the funniest shit you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> but that was one night where I was genuinely gone mental. I think I genuinely had a breakdown one of these nights. Because <laughs> I was just like, right, how... how... Uh, it's really dark. It was like, how, how could, how could I fucking finish this right now? You know, what's the fucking, what's the fucking plan of action? It's going out of my mind in this hot ass, re- stupid tent, fucking losing my box. And uh, yeah, it's fucking absolute wild shit. Absolute fucking wild shit that was. Um, look, you put someone in a tent for a week. You don't know what places they're gonna go. But if you put them in a field with a shaman, well, maybe they maybe they come back to talking about fucking hyper dimensions and mushrooms and shit. <laughs> you know, always a chance. Psychedelics are one hell of a drug. Uh, like, never tried them, of course. Yeah, I was thinking, you never tried drugs. You're straight edge. You never tried drugs. <laughs> no, well, no, 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 never tried mushrooms. Never tried mushrooms. Never tried the hard shit. Yeah, 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 I believe you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just see you slowly opening a bag of mushrooms. <laughs> um, nah, definitely not. Never had the option to. Probably would. Fuck it, why not? If I'm in a chill place, I'll do it. Fuck it, I'm you know, imagine but, me. But I don't, I don't want to become one of the pricks. It's like the fucking... It's like the Buggy documentary. Do you ever see the Buggy documentary? Oh, really? It's like, I sleep with a bunch of women. <laughs> Where it's like, I've wasted about 200 grand on escorts. Yeah. Now, why? Yeah. Why? I've spent all my money on crypto. Uh, fucking hell. Do you, could you want to help yourself, you fucking idiot? Do you actually want to help yourself? Nah, not really. And it's like, I think you should get a job because you can't pay for your money. And then he goes to he goes to do a job and it's like, well, I am a convicted felon. And I am fat and disabled and I'm fucking useless, but you should hire me. It's like, well, you've just sabotaged that, haven't you? You just don't want to work, do you? Yeah. And then it's like, it's all right, I'm fixing myself. Fucking, that's Boogie's ghost. He's not dead. Um, yeah. Fucking, it's like, all right, I'm fixing myself. I've gone out into into the woods with a shaman and we're going to do mushrooms. Like, and it's like, are you are you going to do anything? Nah. <laughs> nah, I'm just gonna keep doing the same shit. I'm just gonna try again. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake! It's... Great documentary, by the way. I Absolute have... raw bloke. I I haven't watched the documentary, but I have watched someone like fucking like dissect it. If that makes sense, like yeah. g- give you the interesting notes. Because I remember when I came over for the first visit uh, in November. So I believe it was most critical. Or like did a dissect of it. Like who dissected it? I was just like, look at this fucking loser. Like, look at him. Doesn't want to, like, Bucky can't help himself. And I always laugh at Bucky because it's like, he's he's a definition of a man you should not give money to. You look at me. I don't, wait, hold on, I'll just go full screen. You look at me. I'm actually a man you don't want to spend money on because look, I'm fucking wrestlers in that wrestling ring, like, lads. Like, obviously, you don't want to give me money. But, Buggy. It's like, oh yeah, I spent like two hundred grand on escorts. I'm like, that's the only way women will sleep with you, you fat piece of shit. Don't mean to, don't mean to yeah. use the, the f word, but like, fucking, I'm a bit fat. I mean, but even he's I not exactly gonna dispute it, is he? To be fair, I've been losing a bit of the belly. I've been doing exercise. I've actually got I, I rediscovered what my core muscles are. Like, fucking, not doing exercise for so long, I was, like, I was struggling to do sit-ups. But now I've actually got that core back. It's actually happening. I've got a slightly flatter stomach. It's great. Um, um, still not there yet. It's only been, like, a couple of weeks. But, I, uh, yeah, it's been been pretty cool. Been pretty fun. But, yeah, the fucking Boogie documentary, miserable, though. <laughs> It's like, all right, Boogie, you will probably die in debt. And it's like, okay, here's this. And the fucking, ah. Oh. The funniest bit, though, is because he's got a really young girlfriend who's clearly got very bad daddy issues. And then it's like, you get the vibe. You're like, 
uh you know and then she talks about her like home life how it was all like it was a bit bad and it wasn't as you know it was just a bit rough and then you're like oh i went oh fuck she got daddy issues and then it's like oh <laughs> uh, why is this happening this is gross <laughs> this is just fucking gross make it stop um and yeah it's a weird documentary i can't lie to you yeah, but... It's a good one. It's a great documentary. It's just the contents is fucking just shit to watch. It, it's, it's so like, fun. I became someone out of nothing and I spent all my fucking money on shit. Like, how I can describe it for us is like, when you, it's like, oh, I love this wrestler. Oh, they're making a dark side of the ring on him. Oh, this guy's just a piece of shit. And you're like, <laughs> wow. Wow. It's like Dynamite Kid. Oh, great wrestler. Oh, I bet he has fun stories. And yeah, no, he's just a dickhead. Who ever have gone to his wife and talked yeah, about Yeah, it'd be like if we, if we did a video on, like, Hayley Slater as actress or some shit. It's just like, <laughs> oh. Hayley Slater was a beautiful oh. woman. The actress, on the other hand, did do a <laughs> hate crime. Oh, yeah, that, that's easy content right there. <laughs> Someone's doing some research. But I'm not, I'm not watching that fucking video. You can fucking do it yourself. Do one on Den. I'll, yeah. do one, I'll do the one on Den, just like. Basically, Grantham was a lovely man. He did murder someone, but let's ignore that. He did stick his finger in his mouth, which is much worse. It's just much, much worse. Um, but, <laughs> but fucking hell, yeah, I can't look. Uh, them documentaries that are supposed to be, like, inspiring or, like, they show you the You truth. can only watch so many of them before you just decide that everything's shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, well, this is really intro. Oh, my God. It's a what? Also, I don't know why. The fucking color grading on my fucking camera versus... On my camera versus the OBS camera. I've got, like, fucking bright red lips. My eyes are... I look like I'm stoned to fuck. I got rosy cheeks. Fuck, you know. But, like... Uh, just, just making me look high. I'm too poor. I just make I, it legal. I just like those fucking documentaries. Like, because honestly, I you want to watch them, but at the same time, you like you don't want to watch them. <laughs> well, but, it's I think when when you have morbid curiosity, it's like all right, you know this is interesting, and then you watch a couple, and then you just you just you. Your soul's just drained, and you're like, ah. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I could get the count number wrong. But I believe someone did a deep dive into Chris Chan's entire career, and it's like a hundred <laughs> parts. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, okay. I, I watched about twenty parts, I think. And at some point, I went, "Can we stop seeing them just punch themselves in the face repeatedly?" Like, uh, like hypothet, like metaphorically speaking, because it's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, a troll is going to do some bad shit to them. Ah, oh, well, let's just let's just allow this next troll in. It's like, fucking, come, fuck. can you just have? Can you just protect yourself a little bit, please? Like, can can you stop just walking yourself into the same shit, please? Like. Obviously, I understand you want to deep dive like the darkest corners of the West. Like, Chris Chan is a fucking. Oh, it's sad as fuck. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fucking. It's, like, uh, it's, it's interesting because you're watching something that could be described as a car crash, but it's not like, you know, they're, they're, they're what? They're, they're autistic and they have their special interests and shit. So, you know, some people may watch it like, oh, that's bloody interesting. But as an autistic person, I'm just like, no, no, please. And also, no. they, they were apparently trans, but trans in the way, like, they were trying to get into women's bathrooms. Because they were a fairly lonely loser, and, you know, no one wanted to love them. So they are like, I'm going to go pretend I'm trans. Uh, that's the rumour. Uh, uh, they could actually be trans, but that's the rumour I've heard, is that they were, like, pretending to be trans. Yeah, but that feels like that could be someone that people made up, though. <laughs> Uh, it's just like the actual thing where you have a bunch of turfs being like, they're trying to get into my bathroom. It's like, oh, come on. There's not that many cases of it actually fucking happening, is it? It's, it's just something you can say to build fear. It's fucking, it, it's just, ah. Uh, I, I haven't seen much of Christian. Oh, it's a fucking, honestly, it is it is really interesting. Like, it is genuinely interesting for a little bit, but at some point it does just get sad. 
<laughs> like yeah, at some exactly. point you're just like, can you just help yourself, please? Like how many times are you just gonna let a troll just fuck up your life before you learn? And the answer's probably never. At least now they're in jail, so no one can fuck up. And then he did some again. really dodgy stuff that we can't talk about on YouTube with his dying nan. Yeah, or no, mum. Mum who had dementia, he he uh, he just I'll just do that for you. Unconsensually. Yeah. Because obviously dementia people can't consent. I have no I can't say I have experience over a fucking cock person. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, what's he done? <laughs> That's we're not laughing because of the topic. We're laughing because what that what that implies. <laughs> Piggy's nan had dementia. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Just <laughs> there's no there's no dodgy stuff going on. <laughs> Piggy's not Chris Chandis nan. <laughs> I just, I just, the men's people can't consent. I have experienced that. Wait, that sounds so wrong. That sounds like I did something yeah. to my nan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like I am the Christian oh. of modern day. <laughs> just something that something that is coming from an innocent place that just sounds fucking terrible. But like, oh uh, Jesus! Jesus! Oh, but I just I watch a couple of videos on on them, obviously. Like, dude, because you, your interest is there. But I'm just like, I can't watch a documentary on these. It's a hundred parts. Because when do you? It, it'd be like if we did an EastEnders documentary, but we're only talking about Leslie Grantham, and we did it for about ten, <laughs> twenty parts. Like, how many yeah. times can you bring up everything? It just feels very sad. Like, yeah, how much, like. First, you are dissecting this person's entire life in really weird detail. And I say that as an autistic person with special interests that I know way too much shit about. Like, you fucking... You go into these dissecting literally every facet you can find. And it's like, this is just weird. Uh, like, how much time do you reckon they've dedicated to and obviously they're making money off of it so fucking power to them you know like they've turned it into a fucking job which is bizarre and weird and strange but they're doing it so that's fine was... but yeah it's just fucking I don't know how people do it well, if they're doing an how, hour do, how do people video... hold their interest for so long My, well if they're doing an hour video per part that's about a hundred hours if they're taking if they're doing a hundred videos which when do you run into the same thing that you've mentioned in, like, part 33, like, like you're now mentioning in part 45? Like, like you know what I mean? How many times does it overlap is the thing? Because I'm not sitting down for 100 hours watching a 100-part documentary on fucking Chris Chan, if I'm honest. Like, I'd watch the yeah. middle, I'll, I'll watch the middle, I'll watch the end, that's it. I'll go part 1, part 30, part 100. There you go. Or part 50. Fuck that. Well, you have, to, you have to learn all the fucking stuff. So, so, you know, on December 17th, 1999, they took a shit in the toilet and didn't flush it. Now, that's an interesting fact because back in 2009, this happened to them again. And the reason why this is so significant is because a troll found the shit, smelt it, and then then bolted it into a ring. And that's why yeah, this channel uh... is it's like, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, it's a it's a weird one. It's uh it's something else. But yeah, fuck that shit. It's uh, yeah, not a fan. Um, some point it does just get sad. Uh, should we explore any more knobbery? Should we should we do it, any more shit? It's like the people who got anything are... interesting. It's like I'm in the last media of the Discord and Mickey, and obviously like there's a weird there's a weird like. How can I describe it? Technically, people have dubbed other people who find, like, lost media, like, oh, Kate Shaw's, like, Dora the Explorer's plot. I'm like, eh, like, not plot, but, you know, pilot that was supposed to end in 2004 as a test, like, to see would this show work. Obviously, people have described that as baby lost media YouTube. And then you have the fuckers out there who are finding, like, trying to find the most heinous shit possible. Like the gore, yeah. and I'm like, how it's it's like it's it's literally like you're walking in. It's like, oh, these guys are just these guys are just talking about Dora the Explorer. Guys, do you want to know about Lord Superman? No, 
Please. Please, no. Yeah. Like, yeah, people are, people are weird, man. It's like, I went through a stage where I was just trying to find like the most fucked up horror movie. And obviously I watched the Serbian film and went, oh, <laughs> oh, I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> like, it's so fucked up. It took me two weeks to even, like, think of, I, to even mention it to anyone. I was that fucking like, oh, this is such a horrific as fuck. <laughs> Um, definitely out of that state. It's like seeing like a bunch of gore. It's like, did, did you, you ever go through the edgy stage where like, time to watch someone die? How much trap? Well, yeah, it sounds fucked up, but I'm pretty sure that there's a Reddit just called Watch People Die, which is fucked. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> like, I went through the stage where I wanted to see like what my tolerance for like horrific shit is. And it's just it's just stupid. Why why is anybody doing that? Like we we're shielded from all this stuff typically. Why would you seek out the the horrific stuff? It's just I but I, I like, obviously I didn't go through the gore phase, but I know I've read it fifty fifty where it's like you can get a cute cat video or someone putting their ass all out, or you can get this on air footage of nine eleven and it's like yeah, I'd rather not play this game. I don't take the goatsy, thank you. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, oh, bloody hell, I'm here. <laughs> Unzip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Goatsy, we meet again. Oh, fucking hell. Fucking hell, is he, he I mean, the one thing that, that still is the funniest thing to me. It is obviously. I feel like we all we all know the. Ex I don't know if we all know the existence. It's an old video at this point. I feel like most of us know the existence of one man, one jar, where he takes a glass jar up the rear, um, and it breaks and it bleeds, and it's pretty fucking grotesque. Um. Can we even talk about this on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, we can. It doesn't <laughs> we even allowed. Um, and for some reason, that video stuck with me because I just like that's just mm -hmm. some random guy. Like, am I? If I hypothetically speaking, never happened to me, of course. Just gotta use that one. Uh, if I did that, am I actually going to like the medical room? I don't know. Like, the shame is the shame enough? Am I just letting it fucking go? So that video stuck with me. I'd I'd occasionally think like what happened to the to the one man one jar guy, but someone found him and did an interview. <laughs> someone did an interview with a guy who stuck a jar up his ass and it broke. Like what? I miss the old internet. I really do. Um, and how he was talking about it is just like, yeah. I mean, I just stopped using glass for a while. So. Well, yeah, I just use plastic. You, you, you ever learning? You ever learning? Um, oh, do you ever get any like treatment? Nah, I just use some cotton wool and shit. It's like, what? He was meant to leave us, but at least I got my answer. Yeah, there is some weird parts of the internet that no one wants to explore. Like, uh, I watch. There's a YouTuber I'm not subscribed from because I refuse to subscribe from. Not because he's bad or anything, until this video comes out and it's like, he's a pedophile. But I, the, currently, there's nothing wrong with him. He's a great lad from what I've heard. There's a YouTuber called Nick Crawley. Crawley? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he makes, like, deep in, YouTube's darkest yeah, videos or uh, channels or whatever. Yeah, yeah and I've like, some of this stuff. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And you're watching, and you're like, I'm so excited. And then, you, then it's like, yeah, it really does. To this YouTube. It really does get sad after a while. Yeah. It's like back in the day. Did you ever do you ever get into this? I watched a guy called Fuck, what was he originally called? He called himself like Rob Gavigan in the end, but he was like Rob I don't know, he had some fat he had some wanky name and these videos like seriously strange and like fucking he did did videos about like little documentaries about serial killers. Um and you know that's interesting stuff. Don't know why morbid curiosity and all that. I like I like crime stuff. 
What was his fuck? I think his name was Rob Dyke. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Seriously, strange. Why do you put that on the internet? Crime and stuff. Yeah. Um. And then he got angry because YouTube seemingly didn't want to push his content anymore. It's like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> well, you can understand uh, why. You're, you're fucking about You are YouTube, talking man. about... You're talking about screw some shit. No wonder you're getting demonetized, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it, it's, like the, um, it's like the YouTubers. It's like, why am I getting demonetized? And I was like, well, you are saying the C word multiple times. You are showing a very graphic game that YouTube does not want to push. Or you're like showing the most fucked up shit ever. No wonder your content's not getting pushed. Yeah. Like Johnny Two Cello was posted a video of uh, of like him like it going. Was... Who? Johnny Two Cello. Sh- Fuck you now. Uh, he posted a video. Yeah, you could you could just be making the shit. Oh yeah, yeah. My favorite, my favorite YouTuber, Ricky Cheeks. Sorry. <laughs> but but, John, but uh, like, he does animation videos. Like he makes animation videos. Like, he talks about, like, what happened in ha- uh, King of the Hill in this episode. And he basically was talking Rob about... Pain Nightmare. <laughs> oh, carry on. But he was talking about, like, this one Eric Cartman episode where, like, Scott Terran... I don't know if you've ever heard of the Scott Terran Must Die one. Where it's just, like, where you see something click in his mind and he just ends up killing Scott's parents and beats them to him. And he's like, why is my video getting demonetized? And I'm like... I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder. and it's always interesting because I've always, I've always enjoyed the like slightly darker shit. I've always enjoyed. I always like all the fucking like dark theories. I, uh, I had the time where I liked watching the 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 creepy pastas. You know, I had the time. I like I like the spooky shit. Um, but I don't know how people do it. Like, I don't know how people don't just get fucking miserable doing it. Like, <laughs> at least I can put that away. What if that was my job? I've got to make these little documentaries about this these weird dark parts here. Like, how how are you managing that? Who the fuck knows? It's just it's it's mesmerizing how these people do it without like like because like, I'll understand if they come and go. I'm depressed. I'm like, no wonder, no fucking wonder. <laughs> it's like it's like when it's like it's like am I being toxic? Like, yeah, you're hanging around toxic people. No wonder you're toxic. It's like. What, what you're going to hang around with might stick to you, so be careful. And it's like, I'm depressed. Why are you depressed? Well, I do upload gore videos and fucking creepy pastas and, like, these weird conspiracy theories. And it's like, okay, I can see I can see now why you're depressed. I can kind of see the vision. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird one. Like, I, I, do, I did, did enjoy it. And I, always enjoy, I, I, I like the, like, conspiracy. Not conspiracy theories, because fuck that, you know. Go into a bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, but I enjoy like, like, like the like the dark theories and the interesting videos. But like, yeah, it's just it's something that goes, it's something that comes and goes. Okay, I'll have like a I'll have like a week where I just watch a bunch of this, and then I I generally go, that's enough for that. <laughs> that's that's too much for me. I've had enough. But yeah, I don't know how people do it. Um, it's like how it's like how most of the darkest mysteries are just how all like all like children's TV shows are just secretly like SpongeBob is dead and he is actually just a sponge being played with by a child and it's like oh for, for fuck's sake you know ah oh, courage the cowardly dog his owners are dead this is his last DMT trip before he. Eyes. Like it's, it's and obviously that's not exactly it, but it's always something like that. Johnny Bravo <laughs> is a sex offender, and it's like okay. Rugrats is actually about uh, losing oh. children, and it's like oh fucking hell! Can we can we have can we just not fucking make this children stuff depressing, please? Ash in Pokemon, none of it's real. He's actually in a coma. Pipe down, you. He's actually in a fucking coma. It's all bad. Like, fucking you know. hell. It's... Uh, I, I love children conspiracy theories, like the fucking TV show ones. Because yeah. it's, it's so funny to me. <laughs> it's like, Bob the Builder, he's actually just a child with autism who, 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 uses, who uses these toy trucks. And, and Wendy no. and, and, his other, and the other mate are just his friends. And it's like, okay, fair enough. And then you obviously have, like, Spongebob has an STD. And it's like, 
Sponge subliminal messaging in children's TV show. We've all seen it. That fuck it. That shit blew up like a motherfucker. Everybody's seen. Oh, the. Oh, no, they got him. They got him. Oh, no. SpongeBob said, don't drop the doubloons. You get any of that? No, I didn't. They got you. Uh, it's the fucking. It's like a. It's like in Spongebob where it's like, ah, Spongebob, subliminal messages. You know that scene where Spongebob says, Gary, don't drop the doubloons. That's, that means something else. It's, oh, it's just like, yeah, that's a don't drop the soap in the shower joke. Fucking fantastic. Like, you know, that there's actually a big knob. There's actually a massive knob in the background. The vicar's got an erection. It's like, ah, oh, fucking hell, boys. Can we just... My, I, just like, I love it and I hate it at the same time. My... My, I, it's not well, it's not because because it is talking about Susa, but my favorite like theory is in the Wizard of Oz, the original one, like the one from nineteen thirty something. I don't know if yeah. you've heard this like theory or splinter messaging. Like in the scene where they walk in the yellow brick road, you can see like one of the munchkins like it's fucking. It's like they hung themselves and they're swinging yeah. from side to side in the scene. I'm like, that's that's something to put in your kids' film. You know, we're all going on the yellow brick road, yellow brick road. Yeah, oh, there's just someone's can hang themselves, just swinging side to side. Yeah, yellow brick road, yellow brick road. I mean, it's like how you have all the theories about it. If on the on set, it was f- apparently fucking just awful because they they brought together a bunch of dwarfs, and you know, you'd probably say not the most common of things. So suddenly you're in a group of your people. Absolute fucking chaos. Um, Don't fuck with terrible that. horror stories from that fucking set. I think there, um, is just, there is movies that are just like you wonder, like how they just start, like apparently, like Jimmy. Uh, G- G- I know you said Jimmy Carrey. Jim Carrey. I thought you were gonna say Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Neutron. By Jim- how oh, the my- fuck's that get made? Jimmy. Jimmy Neutron. Oh my god, I don't know if you've seen the video. I need to find it and send it to you quickly. I need to find it. There's a fucking video of Jimmy Neutron's voice actor. Uh, I don't know her name. I just like, you're so skibbity, you've got the riz. You're so skibbity, you've got the riz. <laughs> I'm alright. I'm alright. It fucking fuckers me. But like, what I was saying is like, apparently Jim Carrey is that that's the famous guy who is is now Eggman, Doctor Eggman. He um he like he on the set of the Man on the Moon, the Andy Kaufman like, bio. Like apparently he was just he was just an asshole to everyone. It's like you do know Andy Kaufman was just a nice man to everyone. Like why are you being an asshole? I was like, but I'm in the character of Andy Kaufman. <laughs> He's not an asshole. Andy Kaufman was a nice man from 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 what I know. I'm red. Uh, I was... Yeah, I know him personally. He was a great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hung around him, slapped his dick and went, nice dick. He was, he tight, the... tight dick player. He was the guy who, <laughs> who, 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 who choked, whose girlfriend choked on his, co- his massive cock. He's a 60-year-old 60, 60 granddad. Um, but yeah, I I say that. I do I do really enjoy the videos occasionally. Like, I, the one videos I'll always love because it's so, you can tell that it's just it's just a content farm. And I brought this up on previous episodes, but every now and then I'll put on like like a fucking chills video. Now, if you don't know who Chills is, he's the fucking he's the he's the narrated guy with the most ridiculous voice known to man. Like it's so it's so absurd and like the commentary is so fucking surface level and shit. And it's fantastic. Cause it's like, hello. My name is Chills. It's like, oh, fucking, here we go. And it's like, but all the videos are like, top 15 videos you don't want to see before you sleep. It's like, oh, fucking. I'll go on then. And then it's just like some fucking garbage, some garbage, not scary videos (laughs) whatsoever. But it works. It works every time. And then the guy who's known for speaking really slow and having a strange voice, he becomes a rapper of all things. Like, fuck it, what's, what fucking alternate dimension are we living in? How's does that have, happening? Does he rap in his, like, in his, like, scary video voice? No, no, of course he doesn't. That would have been fucking, that would have been funny. My name is Chills. <laughs> I like MacDonald. Number... 15. 
obviously Chills was the fucking Burger King foot lettuce guy. That that's what he's most known for, of course. Yeah. Um Burger but yeah, King just, just... Nobody wants foot fungus on your burger. It's like... <laughs> Stop it. Fuck's sake. It's great stuff. Oh, oh then again, I used to be an absolute countdown fiend. Oh, I loved the countdowns when I was growing up. Not so much anymore. Like, I don't mind them now. I think if I were to make some, I'd probably enjoy them more. Because obviously you have to, like, fucking rank it and figure out the numbers. But, like, <laughs> I don't know. I was an absolute fiend for them. Everything I liked was a countdown. It was like, let me let me just collect all the information. Um, But, yeah. If I did, I'd have to do a lot of research, unfortunately, though. And they take a lot of time to piece together. But maybe eventually I'll do one or two of them. Like I'm, I think at some point at Christmas we will, we we should do like ranking. Maybe not all the Christmases at like immediately, but at least do like twenty twenty ten twenty ten to twenty twenty. Do stuff like that, and then at some point piece them all together. Number fifteen. Um. <laughs> twenty ten. But yeah, fucking hell. It's what. Well, yeah, I just used to be a countdown fiend. Give me all not not the show, of course. It's just, come on, do I look like I do maths or letters other than Scrabble? No. Yeah, fucking just imagining you listening. To, I just don't think you could stand Jimmy Carr. He's he's fine. Ha ha ha! Nothing wrong with him. He's a funny comedian. Most comedians, though, I will, I won't fucking seek out their stand up. Though I like, you know, stand up, stand ups. And I just, I just don't like, I just don't like the media machine being like, ah, oh, have you heard these these two jokes at the end of Jimmy Carr's special? Ah, oh, they will disgust you. And then obviously some people watch it and go, oh, 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 he made a joke about insert hot topic. Oh, how fucking hell! How dare he make a joke like that? It's like. It's like, you, you want to know who's probably putting out the feelers at? It's probably Netflix, trying to get some fucking people to watch his fucking, watch his fucking show. Like, fucks. Uh, all, all, attention is attention, regardless. Stop fucking falling for it. Um, this, this guy got the non-stick pans. I believe that's his band name. Like, he did a video, and it was basically mocking, I believe it was Ricky Gervais, where it was like, where this, like, obviously he's doing this fucking what Ricky Gervais thinks is stereotype the race, like, where this woman walks in and goes, are you drinking cow juice? And he's like, so what, dude? And it's like, did you assume my pronouns? And then the fucking comments are like, I can't believe you got Ricky Gervais for this video. And I'm like, oh, yes. I love that. I love when people are in on the joke. And they're like, yeah, yeah, Ricky Gervais is a fucking twat. Like, I, I, it's I, just I, I grew the... up a Ricky Gervais fan because I was like, oh, he's an atheist. And then I'm like, yeah, mate, you just, you just want to talk yeah, about a hot topic. All of the jokes are just, are just because, just like, haha, the rain, haha, you think God's real, haha. It's like, oh, fucking, he fuck, is stop an annoying, it. He is an annoying, no, I can't say the word, but he is, he is, he generally, like, if you, uh, he could be sound in real life, he could be, but he just seems like a general asshole. Like you, oh, it seems like an absolute prick. Like, like if, like if you have to talk to him about your problems, I feel like he just made them into a joke. Like I, uh, like, if, like imagine like if he had a son and his son comes out as gay, I would not like to be in that fucking room when he's just cracking jokes. Like he's just like he's making jokes. Oh, you're gay. I always knew you were a bit bent, like a Bentley Mercedes, some shit like that. And it's like, like bent like a Bentley Mercedes, fuck's sake. <laughs> Like I, I just want. Obviously, my famous, my famous one is obviously J, is it James Alexander, uh, A Caster, James A Caster, the fuck Martin Fowler. <laughs> Martin Fowler. <laughs> uh, you you've probably seen the famous James James A Caster one where he takes the piss out of your face. But he's like, uh, I'm too woke now. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is it. Um, can't handle my jokes. I'm too edgy now. I'm too edgy now. I'm too edgy now. And he's just taking the piss out of your face for a solid five minutes. And it's just, oh, it's great. It's great crack. I think it's now time for the EastEnders. 
It is actually have we have we have we have we crossed the line? It's an hour twenty five. Yeah, that's fair enough. It might be time. Um, okay, we're just going to end fun this if... and upload it as a podcast. There we go. Re- <laughs> Fuck the EastEnders. I suppose it's just a general thing. People have enjoyed this when we have the energy. Uh, it's fucking just shoot the shit about random stuff. Fuck it, why not? Oh, oh um, sh- 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 I know. I obviously, at the time of recording this, WWE are doing a pay per view in Scotland. So they're obviously trying to get all the rest of us to go, what's your favourite like thing about Britain or Scotland? And obviously, like, half of them are American, so they don't understand, like, Scotland doesn't, like, have fucking any TV shows. It's like, my favorite, yeah. thing, my favorite thing about Scotland is E-Enders, E-Enders, and it's like, you cannot say E-Enders, it's E-Enders, it's not E-Enders. It's also not Scottish either. Like, yeah, it's like, my favorite yeah, Basically, the answers are Iron Brew. <laughs> that's it. That's all, that's all they got. And, and it's like, my favourite slang word is mate. My favourite slang word is pound. Or, no, not... What, what Glasgow. Is oh, I fucking love when the Americans try and pronounce Glasgow. Glasgow. Birmingham. So, oh, fuck you sure watch you, mate? I'd send it to Why you. Why don't you say it? It's just Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham. From Birmingham. Hello, I'm from Birmingham. <laughs> just absolute brummy. Just to the T. Um, uh, some like, people hate the accent. I think it's hilarious. I, I just I, no. The reason why I love the Birmingham accent is it's just because of Pete. Dunne's. Even you're saying it like the fucking Americans. Birmingham. There we go. Uh, uh, the reason I love it is just because of Pete Dunne. Because I can't imagine a serious like a wrestler cutting a promo in like that accent. Just hello, I'm gonna beat you up. Hello. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. But yeah, point being, if you guys actually want more of this, tell us in the comment section. But there we are. Let's finally talk about the extenders. Have you been doing any of the camera switching, by the way? No, no, I've just kept this on us because it was just the two of us shooting shit. Yeah, fair enough. So Respect I'm going to now switch to you and I'm going to go grab a drink. It's literally outside my door because my father went to the shop. Yeah, all good. Oh, so, there you go. All I'll right. just wait for I'm you on. back in because you're obviously Banging. on two cameras. I mean, I can just see it, so, you know, <laughs> All right, so the first story, and let's go some of the some of the sub-stories first to get it all out of the way. Ian's man flu, which is progressing. The Cindy, he's having a fallout. Obviously talking about the Cindy and Junior conversation, which is pretty integral to the show obviously they're building to a very big affair between the two which i kind of believe will get outed you know imagine them sat at the dinner table together and you have ian who has a secret to tell and george and junior who are at each other's throats they find or they finally made peace and then boom you've been sleeping with my ex-wife how dare you um but ian has man flu Ian is struggling with heart pains, but it turns out to be indigestion. He lets out a disgustingly tinny, dubbed in burp. And it's like, ah, oh, burp. <laughs> like fucking, like, fuck's sake. Um, just, why are you, why are you like this EastEnders? Just, if you have him burp, just have him burp. For fuck's sake make it happen um and but yeah uh, he ends up being put through his paces at the gym by peter and later by junior and cindy spots this and is like junior you better fuck off you better stay the fuck away junior you don't know what you know um and uh, she decides that Junior did this intentionally, and Cindy yells at him, and Ian is handling it like he's got man flu. Um, Cindy apologizes to Junior, and they flirt up again. Piggy, what do you think of Junior's ma- of Ian's man flu? Uh, explain to me what my, the, the sore back. Yeah, well, what do, do you not know what man flu is? Yeah, it's the way you pretend to be overly sick. Well, yeah, it's it's like it's the man flu where it's like, oh, I'm really ill, and they're just lazy and like, please look after me, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I obviously loved it where he was like, oh, I have a sore back, 
Come on, look after me, please. I didn't like. I did. What about the fucking burp that he let out, which was absurd? The most grotesque of burps. The burp was kind of funny. I'll be honest. It's but... just like it was just. If you're gonna make him burp, just have him fucking burp for fuck's sake. Don't fu- like. It, it was just weird. It was just weirdly dubbed in for me, and I didn't like it. Because well, he just goes, it's like, oh, for fuck, come on. I mean, I loved it. I, I, I'm I, currently eating an apple. I mean, healthy. What is this? The fan fiction? <laughs> wow. Um, no, just uh, someone having to burp on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I'm going to try and mute my mic while I eat this apple and just fantastic. give it an ash. Cindy apologizes to Junior and her and Cindy, uh, him and Cindy flirt up a storm. Uh, I suppose the funniest scene of the week, so Piggy, you might want to unmute for this one. Obviously, the funniest scene of the week was the scene where Cindy gives Ian a back massage. And it's like, it's obviously, it's like she's pumping him from behind because he's like, oh, bloody hell, oh, it feels so good. They're doing all the innuendos. He's having a moan. And then Kathy walks in like, oh, we've got to eat food at that table. It's like, ah, oh, fucking. I mean, it's the old wrestler joke, really. It's the wrestling joke where they, where you're caught in a really compromised position. Um, uh, the, just great fun. The example I can give is obviously the, the famous one, which is Trish Stratton and Triple H versus, oh, yeah, just, uh, it's just like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Pump handle slam. And it looks like he's pumping her. And then he's obviously not. And then he's wiped off. And he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I like it after make the clarification that he's obviously not. Um, but I loved it. Like, I loved... Obviously, Cindy was not taking Ian from behind. Yeah, Ian, Ian, Ian's vanilla. Just Ian, in case you thought she was. Ian's obviously not taking a fucking pump and a slam from behind. Without the pumping. Um, I love this scene. I think I had a dream. Oh, no. Carry, let's carry no, on. I'll talk on. about you my dream on. later. Oh, no, no, you'll talk about the scene. I'm no fucking go, you little bastard. Just uh, do your bit. I'll do my bit. I I loved I loved the scene honestly. Like it was a funny scene. Like I loved it. Like um, uh, just her uh, humping, well not humping, but back massaging Eden and, and fucking Kathy. Like that's my son. Oh, you're fucking pegging my son. <laughs> what are you doing that? Doing that on my table? Uh, that's I think I had a dream where. I think I had a dream where EastEnders started swearing. Like, I, I think someone was having a breakdown. Like, There's fucking shit! And just, like, smashing something. And, I, I don't know, I think it's because there was that one Reddit thread recently where it's like, EastEnders, they're getting a bit... They're getting a bit TV-13. It's like, they're, come on, they're not swearing, are they? They've said bastard and they said bitch. If you have not heard either of them... You're taking the fucking piss, like for fuck's sake! <laughs> it's so stupid. But but well, EastEnders are they are saying swear words. Fucking come on, come on! They're not really, are they? You're saying bitch. No one cares about the word bitch. I mean... You watch anything, you get the word bitch. I mean, it's the kind of thing, again, not the rag oil on the Americans, but the other thing where, like, we can handle the fucking, oh, yeah, bitch bastard, because that's, like, because, you know, you walk down to a, you walk down to a fucking pub in England, you walk into a Wetherspoon, you're going to hear someone going, you, uh, you bastard, you fucking bastard, you scullywog bastard. Or, like, prick, you know, yeah, prick's you've... a good one. Not that I use it, of course, it's a bit rude. Um... Obviously, you know what word I'd love to see on a British television show. Even if someone has said it, probably on a British television show. Obviously, I can't say the word. You have to go to one more match to hear that word. Um, I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, see you next Monday. Um, come. <laughs> come. <laughs> There's a new word for you. Come. Why, why are you a child? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That, that giggle at the end sends it as well. <laughs> come. Said come. But that but but you know what that means. So oh, fucking hell. Why is this happening? Why is this happening to us? Um, but obviously like I I I look I've heard like or like compared to like America's like T V standards, ours is just out the window, isn't it? 
Like, over here on RTE, I don't know if they do it on the BBC, but, like, fucking on RTE, there's, this t- there's these TV shows, and, like, they'd have just Oasis playing in the background, and it's like, did you get the licence for this? <laughs> no, definitely Bleh. not. You see, we did get the licence, but we got Don't Look Back but... in Anger by the Bee Gees, but we're playing <laughs> the Oasis version. But we did get the licence, but it's yeah. the Bee Gees, so it's a different one. I was just laughing um, at I was laughing at yeah. like, Irish TV just like we we we're just unfiltered. Like obviously you know you've known one of the most well iconic in the past ten years, Robo Garda. He's lived on an in infamously. Oh the rest of fucking I just there's one Robo Garda one that I keep watching just because of how stupid it is. And it's the pants of Jimmy Savile. It always boggles me. You've got the pants of Jimmy Savile on you. You gotta take it off, man. And it's just in a very big Dublin accent. Roll, roll I, I, I can't. I can't even do roll It's a very Irish. It's a very Irish high pitch Dublin accent. That's how I describe it. Like normal I'm Dublin. Try to figure if I can fuck. If I actually want to give it a try or not. Go on, give it a try. Nah, I, I'll bust it out if I'm feeling it. All right. Well, well, I'll let you continue um, with the extenders. Yes, this I has been a long one so far. Yeah, eat your apple. Um, but yeah, the next up is Kim and Howie's and Patrick and Yolanda's return. Denzel finds himself partying again, but it's interrupted by Mark Wee, Kim Fox, Howie, Pearl, and Mika. Micah, I think it's Micah, the boy. Um, they are disturbed to see Denzel shitting it up, partying it up, rather. And Kim makes a big return. They joke about the cruise, but Denzel is angry that they left. And Yolanda and Patrick also return, and Kim is upset that they left Denzel all alone. They agree that it was selfish, but it was the best thing that they could have done. They agree to go to the pre-christening thing with Chelsea and hope they can figure out if anything's changed with Levi and Pastor Clayton on that front. Uh, And they're touched initially. It's all nice and wholesome because Chelsea asks Patrick and Yolanda, to be to be Jordan's godparents, which I can't lie, lads. If if you die, Chelsea, I don't think I don't think they're gonna be picking up Jordan as their own. <laughs> like, look, I, I I hope I hope Patrick and Yolande live to a ripe old age. <laughs> Probably wouldn't make them the godparents, like. If anything happens to me, you can go to them and, like, fucking Patrick has to deal with a five-year-old at the age of fucking, like, 78 or something. Like, you know, nah. Nah, not about, not about that life. Um, But it's it's all good, but I suppose they are touched when they're asked to be the godparents, but they're also unnerved when Chelsea reveals that Levi has just fucked off and he's not been seen ever since. Um, and just as they're dealing with this fucking realisation, well, Pastor Clayton shows up, and they immediately are like, fuck this, I'm leaving, I'm not dealing with any of this shit. And then Yolanda kind of breaks down, realising that, you know, the amount of courage she had to, like, build in herself to actually talk about what happened to her, well, it basically means nothing, because Levi's not, like, he's not done what he said he was going to do, and he's now just suddenly disappeared some people are suggesting that he's been murdered don't think so <laughs> he just he probably he probably voiced his concerns and the, then the church went oh levi we think you're getting a bit too we think you're getting a bit too attached to this area you know you're getting a bit too attached to the people i think you should move to a different parish and uh leave pastor clayton the fuck alone i just i love the idea of the fucking Oh, that's, that's I just love the fucking idea that there's like a Catholic fucking mob. Just like, like Levi speaks out and the mob comes out of nowhere. Like it's the soprano but for Catholics or Christians, whatever the religion they're basing in in England in East End. I just love the idea that there's like a Levi, you spoke about the church. Get him in the van, lads. Get him in the van. Get in that fucking hmm. van now. Drag him yeah, off. Yeah, just just t- t- taking a hit on him. Um, yeah, but there we are. That's all that stuff. Once again, some of these are just very minimal sub stories. It's not really too much going on. So, yeah, 
Uh, and finally, we have Steve and Billy not getting along. Essentially, he, Stevie wants to do something for Father's Day. He talks to his options with Mo and opts for a Father's Day fishing, which the Vic sponsors. Mentions how he used to do it with his boys, but then said Billy wouldn't do it. Is that some little foreshadowing, maybe, knowing what we know now about the new Mitchells on the way? Maybe, I guess. I thought it at the time. Maybe it's bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> there we are. Anything about that stuff? No, no. no. Time to get into the big one. The big one. Reese's secret is out and Bianca leaves in a state. So, and Piggy has a lot of things to say about Bianca's exit, so we'll get there in time. Um, Sonia and Reese struggle to deal with the loss of the baby. Sonia wants to push forward, while Bianca tries to get him to convince her to stop. Sonia can't deal for weight with waiting, and Reese has to find more money that he doesn't have somewhere. Bianca susses that there's something dodgy about the money, as Reese tries to flog his car to Jay that doesn't work. And then tries to swindle Cat out of a tax bill that she definitely did pay for. But apparent, but he's like, oh no, you didn't. Um, Cat immediately realises when she goes to the record saying, oi, you fucking cheeky little bastard. I also like how, I like how, just as the thought, they never say bugger, which is obviously a very, very, very British swear word. But they just say beggar instead. <laughs> like, it's just, just because... Um, but there we are. There's also the East Endersisms where they don't say bollocking, they say rollicking or some shit, you know. Like, it's, it's, it's close enough, but it doesn't mean the same. Um, and, yeah. Uh, because Kat tells Bianca about Reese trying to swindle her, her vendetta continues, and he heads straight to Debbie, and he tells her that he, that he has to take the rest of the money to give themselves the best chance. I, I mean, immediately, I'm still not a big fan of the, yeah, let me just use your money that I, that if it was mine, it would have been in a joint account. Like, fucking, <laughs> I'm just going to use your money to pay for my baby. Like, I'm still not a big fan of it. And I don't really like it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but Bianca fucking finds him and witnesses this and is mortified and confronts him. Ree says it's what Debbie would have wanted. Mate, I could fucking make... I could make my penis talk and say what I really want is a fucking five-star yacht and a bunch of women. Like, fucking... He can say anything. No one knows Debbie. No one knows who she, what she was like. Nobody knows who she was or how she would think about it. I don't fucking care if you say, oh, Debbie would have wanted this. Yeah, well, she can't fucking speak for herself, can she? Like, I, I, yeah, i still not the biggest fan of this. Like, ah, uh, well, I did buy... I did buy... 10 replica shirts of my local football club. But it's it's just, it's what my dad would have wanted. It's like, he, he can't fucking talk about it now, can he? Fuck's sake. It's, Don't like it. It's like what I, what I used to do with my dad when my nanny died. I think, oh, oh, dad, get me this figure. Why? It's nanny's last wish. I get this figure. Oh, all right, son. Here you fucking go. Oh, can I get this tattoo? My nanny always wanted me to get a tattoo. I'll go on, John. Fuck's sake. Uh, but I, I fucking love this. Like, I obviously understand that it's not funny. I understand it's not funny. I suppose take this very serious because we're a serious podcast. Just ignore the past hour and a half of us that's shitting on Chris Chan. Just ignore that. Um, They'll probably enjoy it, though. Um, Just, uh, like, I just love the idea of, like, your wife in a coma, your dead but not dead wife in a coma being like, Buy a chippy for yourself. Oh, she says buy a chippy. I'd fucking buy a chippy then. Mm. Give yourself a Lamborghini. Oh, she said get a Lamborghini. I have to get a Lamborghini. <laughs> oh, get yourself... oh, oh, I'm in a box. Let me out of the box. I'm in a box. No one's saying that though. It's like, 
Oh, get me a new, get me a new Toyota. I'll get them new sneakers. Oh, she said get new sneakers. Better get them fucking pumps on. Fucking them. What are you gonna do, boy? I just love the idea of like your your wife who's in a car by like the minute she wakes up like this car by uh, I I uh, noticed something that was missing from my bank account. It's about thirty grand missing. But you see, Daddy, I cheated on you. But it's alright, you were in a coma. So it's technically What was I supposed to do? (laughs) My dick just slipped in her. What was I supposed to do? Just dicked her down by accident. She consented. And I consented too. I played the tuba, she played the trombone. Um and it's like okay. Like obviously like okay, we'll get into it, but I just fucking love like, like, obviously, we make the joke where Dean makes Cam walk into a shop and I've been yelled rapist. But, but fucking, but Reese can't even walk into his own kitchen and make toast for himself. I'd be angry going, Who's this fat, lazy wanker walking in here? Can't even sustain a job with Phil Mitchell, little lazy. Come uh, on. Like, who's this fucking wanker? Who's this bollocks? Oh, you think you're the cock of the walk? You can't fucking talk. <laughs> Honestly, calm down, Bianca. Piped out. Yeah, Bianca. Subtlety's never really been Bianca's thing. She will tell you exactly what she's thinking, and she makes Reese's life fucking miserable. Um. So she says, "Look, either you tell her I will." He then explains to Sonia that he's been using the money to pay for IVF. Sonia's upset, but. She, she's a little bit upset that he's been using money, but she's mostly upset about the idea of, yeah, but what if we have the baby? You're going to have to share the baby with her, your your, your ex, your wife. It's like, all right, for fucks. Like, c- come on. You, you fucking, like, all she needed was, it's not illegal. Oh, bloody hell, it's not fine. Fine by me. I can't, I don't want to share it with that bitch, though. You don't know her. You don't fucking know her. Like, Oh, I'm sorry. Is sharing of you've entered this relationship with a man who has a wife, and you're like, oh, don't don't want to bloody share him though. It's like, well, oh, fucking, you don't get any choice, have you? You're you're like, ah, oh, don't don't want to fucking ah, oh, you ah, oh, you've you've taken money, ah, oh, bloody hell, ah, oh, how fucking could you do that? Can we still have the baby though? <laughs> Ah, oh, t- fuck it, just flimsy as fuck. Don't like it. Um, I I loved Sonia. Like she she didn't need no convincing. Like me buying a shit ton of wrestlers over the past week. I need no convincing. The convincing was, should I get this figure? And then my voice going, you have one. The other one going, go treat yourself. Ah, you said it yourself, voices. I'll fucking treat myself there, but I'll put. Um, and it's like, I love Sonia. It's just like, she doesn't need that much convincing. Like, oh, do you want to run my bank, Sonia? I'm not feeling it. Uh, I'm, I'm just fucking. Uh, there's a lot snack. of money. All right, then. <laughs> I'll give you a Scooby snack. Come on. We'll yeah, I was just. I was just wound me up a little bit. Like, fucking. Oh, I'm sorry. You've, you've, you've entered a. Re... Oh, excuse me. You've entered a relationship with this man knowing, like, now you now know he has a wife. Don't want to share it with that fucking bitch, though. It's like, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> like, do you fucking mind? What's wrong with you? Fuck's sake, like, god damn it, son. I just want bloody kids so much. Okay, sound. Fuck I, off. I think Bianca put a foot in there. It's like, we have Bex. You, what, what, what's there not to love? And it's like, yeah, you don't understand Bianca, do you? I fucking, but yeah, it just wound me up a little bit. It's a bit annoying. Uh, Sonia asks Reese to leave, and Bianca's fucking furious and lets Sonia hear it. This is obviously setting up a big showdown between the two. Kathy is like, ah, oh, you know what Reese did was wrong, but he's not Rocky. <laughs> like he he wasn't doing it maliciously, and. Sonia's just like, yeah, I, I, I want the money. I, I, we need to have this baby. I'm just like, okay. Bianca says, one day uh, she will see you like I see you. And Reese calls her a toxic mess of a person. 
And then we see old classic introvert rage. You know, son, you know, Bianca, if you keep coming between us, I will not stand for it. Introvert rage. I will, I will, I will dislike it immensely if you go against me ever again. Please don't do that. <laughs> introvert rage. We've all been there. Maybe not all of us. Some of us are extroverts. Weird those. Um, Bianca wants her to believe that Reese is a dodgy guy and isn't worth it, suggesting resting things before continuing on, trying to get pregnant again, which, honestly, is probably the best thing Bianca fucking suggested. Maybe you should wait a little bit. You know, you did just basically lose a baby. And you've clearly not dealt with it. Maybe you, maybe you shouldn't just just barrel in and do it again and she goes nah not feeling that <laughs> like maybe you should consider waiting nah fair enough <laughs> like, looking... come on be reasonable about this and she obviously she explains like oh you know i didn't get to see bex's first footsteps i never really got to be... i didn't want to be a young mum and then when i was i gave i gave her away so i missed all the first steps but and then it's like now this money's our only shot, and it's like, you 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 could you could adopt a baby, like baby's not gonna know any different. No, if what you know, Reese. As far as we know about Reese, Reese is not obviously Reese wants his own baby, which sure you know, but like. He's basically he's basically seen that he's infertile, so you know there there are other solutions than just spaffing like fucking thirty grand of someone else's money <laughs> on the IVF. It's... And I, I I get that it's supposed to be this this nice story about Sonya like finally being able to have a kid on her terms, and but <laughs> like you just you all look like you all look like pricks like. It's... But... Most police and Debbie in the fucking ball door. They're just like, oh, well, boys, you infertile. What were you doing, Reese? But did someone just shoot a tennis racket, a tennis racket, a tennis ball right? I mean, it's, I mean, it, it can just be a thing that that happened. It's not like it's not like you have to do something. All oh, right. Like some thought... people are just naturally. It's not like he's been doing some weird shit. <laughs> like, Boxing gloves. Some people, wrong. some people are just just naturally. To sound what like. Fuck's sake. Fucking science biology lesson. Like, yeah. Just how it works. I mean, why do you think IVF's a fucking option in the first place? I just think of the... the... Avril Lavigne song. I'm in mobile. But I'm just replacing the other... I'm in part of Alright. Um, but yeah, Sonya essentially says, get on board or get the fuck out, Bianca. Um, and then she has a talk with Kat, and she kind of breaks down a little bit. She explains how after Terry and Milton Keynes, she had a breakdown. And it turns out she's been suffering with depression, or from depression. I don't know, whatever the wording is correctly uh, said. She explains that she only tried the tablets for a week and felt like a zombie. Uh, I, get, I get that it's Bianca, and I feel like Bianca's one of those people who kind of just believes that depression's a myth. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just... That's the type of character she is. I I I I appreciate the idea that she probably just would say, "I don't want fucking tablets. I want to feel normal." You know, fuck that. Um, but also for fuck's sake, it's just like just help yourself, Bianca. God damn it, just fucking do it. Just help yourself. Take your medication. Um, like I get it. I've been there. I've felt like a zombie on meds. Definitely took took a bit longer than a week for him to settle in, though. But it's Bianca, you know, people fucking do things how they do. It's fine. Um, I will say, obviously, we can now view everything that Bianca's done recently in the lens of, like, oh, you know, she didn't want to be alone. She wasn't as kind of loud and Bianca as she normally is. She's just been fucking yelling at everyone the entire time. Like, you know... It makes sense, but 
does feel a bit tacked on. Like, <laughs> that definitely feels a bit like, oh, I'm depressed. Uh, what? Yeah, I've been depressed all along. Could have fucking fooled me. <laughs> I mean, uh, do you have much to say about this 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 aspect? Uh, I paused. I just told us again. Uh, I paused the question in the Discord. What do, do do you feel like she's been alpha mooned? And if people are confused, what I mean by that term, it's basically imagine your beloved character. Then they start acting out of character. They start doing things that are not in character for them to do. So basically, just imagine like Barry from EastEnders. He doesn't do Barry Hockey anymore. He just he scams people out of car. He scams people. Like he's not Barry. Anymore, yeah, is he? I. Yeah, it's. Uh... I I don't I still fundamentally think this is Bianca because at the core Bianca is like a fucking gobby prick who will just say whatever she thinks and not really think about it. I feel like Bianca's one of those people who doesn't even doesn't even know that there's like a class system. She just knows that she's fucking poor. <laughs> like doesn't even doesn't even comprehend. Um, but I think that the thing with Bianca is she usually has a partner who kind of. You know, it's always the thing where it's like I'm better when I with you when I'm with you, and I feel like Bianca generally, her partners are a bit more of a voice of reason, and they kind of they ground her, they get her through things, and that's how she manages. But like being alone, I don't think she's ever been particularly good at. You know, similar to Cat in that way. Like I, I don't think they've like yeah, she's not been particularly nice she's been a massive bitch in this stint and we'll get onto it more slightly but i don't think they've ruined the character necessarily like i'd still happily see her back and figure out why like what happened and why she's feeling like this yeah. and that, i think that's a difference between that and alfie 2018 where it's like just fuck off now please just go just fucking just go i can't deal with you right now i just what do I, you reckon i just so, like I like I'm obviously we're doing 2014 East Dennis by doing Who Done It. Shout out to that. Obviously she leaves in September 2014, but seeing her here from Christmas 2013 to December, uh, a April 2014, currently in the show that we're watching ten years before, um, she she seems like a lovely person. She has a husband to balance her, a boyfriend to balance her out, her kids. But but here she just seems like this bitch, like like everyone anyone fucks up. She's like, oh yeah, well you always fuck up. I was knew you fucked up, and it's like, yeah, you calm down, you stupid bitch. Like, you know what I mean? I just I don't like the direction this Bianca went in, because she feels like she's overcrowding a scene. Does that make sense? Like yeah, because she's giving like she's. I'm not saying she's not putting any effort in. She obviously Patty Palmer is obviously putting loads of effort in. I think she's doing a good job. Yeah, I I just don't like the idea of like she's just been. They're just going okay. We're making you this one note character because I just I don't mean, like it. I just yeah, I get it. And obviously they have. It feels like they have done a lot of the progress that Bianca like did. But I also don't necessarily think that like look some people in their life they just fucking like some people don't change some people are always themselves i don't think I, i've changed a decent chunk in the last couple of years but fundamentally i don't think me now is going to be too different from me in like five years maybe i'll probably have more responsibilities and more life experience but so, inherently most people don't change and that's to be expected you know some people's characters pretty well established i do feel like they probably made bianca a little less mature this time and it obviously strikes through with how she's just been a massive bitch to everyone but now she's struggling she's fucking she's but now now she's she's lost a fella of like 10 years her, her like daughter doesn't fucking want anything to do with her now she's with her fucking sister, who let's be honest, never really liked each other that much. Like they are siblings, but they never not exactly like having a fucking drink on a night out or whatever. Like they are technically sisters, but they're not the same. 
And now she's fucking trapped with her sister and her weird, like, to to an extrovert, her weird fucking weird uh, partner. And, like, she's just hurting a lot. And I think I understand why she's acting like this. It doesn't mean that it's easier to sit through. But, I mean, it feels like all, her entire life is kind of out of control and she's just trying to find a way to cope. And obviously her way to cope isn't working. We are. Long-winded explanation. Fair enough. I just, you know, I just, I just don't like the way the act is in 2024. I just, yeah. I kind of find it as a, like, you're not, you're just bringing back the act, like, it's like if you order like, a ham sandwich. Even if we, even if we think about in 2014, though, like, we've just seen Bianca do this in 2014. She's just fucking, she's jumped to a conclusion with Terry. She's kicked him out. She wants him to fucking leave. And she's making everything about herself. Like, we've just seen this in 2014. This is who Bianca is. She's selfish. She's a cow. She's a bitch. That's who she is. Obviously, yeah. But, like, the, Bianca's return in 2024 to me is, like, when you order a ham sandwich, but you don't get anything on it. You don't get coleslaw. You don't even get butter. You just get ham on, on a slice of two pieces of bread. And it's like, you, you could have brought back one of it. You could have even brought back Morgan if you wanted to. But, no, you had to just bring back Bianca. Like, let's be honest, in 2024, if you're going over to bring back the Jackson 5, and they're just going, okay, we're bringing back the Jackson 5, but it's only the Jackson 1. It's like, okay. So, is everyone going to be interested? No. It's how I mean, be. we've had a... We, we, just because... I don't know, I feel like we have still gotten a decent, like, load of good with Bianca. We got the really nice scene where she's she like the funny scene where she's on the bed whilst Whitney's given birth we got Whitney finally calling Bianca mum which was a big moment because she's never really done that before so it was that fucking thing like I think there has been a lot of good stuff with this Bianca return it's just that the character's not exactly been the most likable over the last little like couple of since Whitney left so like I get I get that there's gonna be a gonna be a, a bit of fatigue but I also think this is Bianca. This is who she is. Like, yeah, sure. She may have like roamed around the fucking fence. She's roamed around the border that she's fucking trapped in. But fundamentally, Bianca's Bianca. This is just her. Fair enough. Fair enough. And like, yeah, they may have undone some of the progress that the character made. But they clearly have an idea of where the character's going to go. Obviously... We'll we'll see if they actually progress. Like if they just make a leave like this, it's a bit garbage. But it's also a good foundation for how she can grow out of it. You know, I feel like like if this is her exit, it'll be really underwhelming, and I will complain. But I feel like they're setting up more for her to off screen. She'll like find 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 the pieces and get, put herself back together again. Maybe re reconnect with Tiff. So yeah. Bring Morgan back, please. He's my favourite. But then again, I am a, a Chris Clenshaw apologist, apparently. So, uh, Chris, Chris. And a contrarian, so fucking... Yeah, so it, if you say something's bad, I'll find a way to disagree. So... Absolute glazer. Um, Alright, where did we start? Uh, Kat tries to get Sonya to talk to Bianca, but Sonya's on the wall path and Bianca is drunk. She explains how she wants her to leave, but Bianca, like, just fucking unleashes the whole secret of them stealing from Debbie in front of everybody in the Queen Vic. And then she breaks down in the taco track, in the, in the taco truck, and is just about ready to, set, to tell Sonya the truth, but starts the engine, but sees Reese, starts the engine, and leaves. So yeah, she leaves drunk and in a state. And yeah, after the funeral, Kat explains that Bianca's been dealing with depression and makes sure that Sonia speaks to her. Sonia tries to get in touch with Tiff. And apparently we missed Keegan, who did go to the funeral, but they didn't actually show the funeral because they didn't want to. So obviously we didn't see him. But it seems like Bianca's gone AWOL. 
Now, I don't necessarily think this is Bianca's final exit in this stint. I feel like she'll have a couple more episodes, maybe. Um, which is why I'm not entirely out on this. But if this is her exit, I will be very underwhelmed. Wait, did, did, Keeg, did we actually see Keegan in the episode? No, no. No, they just said, oh, you just went, oh, yeah, Keegan's at the airport now. Like, So it was said that he went to the funeral, but obviously we didn't show the funeral. So. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Why? Why do you got to tease me with this? We could have got don't, Ricky. Don't, 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 don't become one of the fat boy stands, please. We could have got Ricky. We could have got Ricky. But Why is no. Ricky going to Keanu's funeral? Because he's amazed. He, 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 loved, he loved Keanu. They were her best friend. Better half. But yeah, that's is that the week of EastEnders, or do you have any more? No, no, we still have Keanu's funeral to get through. Aww. Been a long one. Fuck me, it's gone over two hours. Fuck you now. Alright, let's rattle through it then. Uh, Linda's struggling around uh, Keanu's funeral brings the mother face to face with her son's killer Linda has been struggling around Father's Day she's been finding it hard since Ollie has been asking her questions and sexy Johnny with a lovely little beard oh, oh. yeah I noticed he grew a beard Woof. He de- he's got a great beard why, is everybody- why can't everybody grow nice beards where's my beard oh, it's not happening is it? look at this I've not shaved for a while this is what I got Sorry, I just. I look like I look like I look like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> See, my, you have this. Look, sex appeal. Look at that. I'm fucking. Ah, oh, she's not the sideburns. I'm like fucking Doctor Robotnik over here, just fucking, just egging it out. Um, but yeah, sexy Johnny, looking good. Love the beard. Keep the beard, please. It hides the fact that you've got a ridiculous amount of face. <laughs> if jo- if Johnny had a face slider, Johnny has gotten all of the face. <laughs> um, yeah, Bernie wants to do a wake for the funeral at the Vic. Linda struggles with this, but Elaine keeps accepting literally everything. <laughs> oh, you want, you want to do this Father's Day efficient? Yeah. Oh, you want to do a wake for Keanu? Yeah. Linda's inconsolable in the barrel stall and screams about her killing him. And Sharon and Johnny decide to try sober up. And later on, Kathy and Sharon have a talk, worrying that she's becoming like Angie. Um, Sharon forces Linda to go to an AA meeting, and she says she'll be there the entire way. You know, like, we will work, we'll get through this. She talks through why she drinks, how she wants to stop, but how much she still struggles with the mixed death. And Sharon was thinking about talk about Father's Day and about Alvi's dad. And Sharon... Sharon goes to, like, talk to him, be like, oh, you know, Keanu's in heaven now. Uh, but her heart just breaks inside because he's been, he's been colouring a little Father's Day card with Keanu on it. And it's like, you know, I, if you're a parent, that fucking break you. Like, uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's lovely. Just fucking... Uh, it's a, a painful tear. Um... Martin explains how kids pick up a lot, even if they don't seem to understand, they do eventually, and he offers to help her do it. Obviously, when he when he told Arthur about Cush dying, obviously Mr. Pickles was in the show, and that's where Mr. Pickles, who is still around, apparently, that's how he showed up, so there we are. Um, Patrick's a uh, kid who nobody talks about, old Isaac. And Cherie, that nobody talks about either. Bad times. Bad I, I, times. I thought that Robert was there and like, oh, seven, I'm fucking, I'm all, I'm all over the place. Yeah. No, he's in 2020. Oh, Mr. Pickles, he's still around. It's the only thing that Ruby left Martin after she fucked off. Imagine, it's all Mr. Pickles. Imagine that, like, oh, you're going to leave me, you're going to leave me money or anything? Nah, I'm gonna leave you a fucking rabbit. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Sharon explains that Keanu is in heaven and he's become an angel, and Albie seems to understand. The day of the funeral, Sharon's putting on a brave face, but is stressing the fuck out. 
doesn't help when Karen puts on the frighteners saying you need to tell Albie Phil is the dad and that you killed my boy. My boy. Um, the day of the funeral, oh uh, wait no, the six are all despondent on the day and they're all struggling. In a conversation with Kat, Karen reveals that Mitch is still with Bailey and starts to wonder if it's actually Keanu's fault with how bad he actually got in the end. Which, you know, it's an interesting little take. Um, and all the six meet in the arches and they struggle to deal with the grief. And when Sharon explains how she feels so guilty, Kat overhears this. Sharon wants to be at his funeral, but Karen banned her from it. Once Kat reminds her of the truth of how bad Keanu got, in the end they both cry, which gets Sharon the invite at, to the funeral. We see a montage of the six all struggling with a guilt as uh, Karen gives a speech at the funeral. I will say we don't see the funeral. They said, nah, fuck that, we're not doing it. Not doing the funeral, it's all implied. We just hear uh, Karen deliver a speech. And... Okay, Reese's speech. Uh, fuck it, I've lied. I wonder what Reese would have said at the funeral. We we get we get we get into that later. Um, I was half asleep for this episode, lads. So I'm sorry if I missed anything. Yeah, he's not he's not he's he's having a sleep now. <laughs> um, no, I'm not. Fucking, it's nearly done, mate. It's nearly done. Um. But yeah, so uh, Karen's like, oh, you know, he was he was he was a, he was a hard worker. It's who he was. Blah blah blah. Loved his kids. Wanted wanted to grow up and be older. Um. Denise opens up to Kim about being sectioned. Where Kim's like, mate, fucking let me in. Come on, I've struggled with stuff too. Like, I want let me be a bet. Let me be a better sister. Come on. Um, Karen small talking with Sharon and the Vic and needs to see Dean and needs to know why she did it. Meanwhile, she's catching some weird looks from Linda, who's obviously fucking guilty as shit. Um, and the six, uh, she, uh, Karen slips out. She's like, oh, I need to slip out before I show myself up. So she goes to see Dean. Um, and... The six toast to Keanu finally being cremated and then finally being in the clear. And Reese's eulogy was about to be a hard one, being about how, you know, you, know, you thought Keanu was going to be like the others and going to mock him, but he never did. But he gets hijacked by Ian and Alfie making jokes. And Reese storms out. Reese upset and, like, with Sonya for leaving him alone. And he's just terrified of being alone. Um, and Karen goes to see Dean and is face to face with her son's killer. He reasons, saying, Why would he kill Keanu? And just as Sharon and Linda ask if it's all over now, Dean tells Karen to ask Linda, like, you know, ask Linda, and you'll see she's not telling the whole truth. So there we are. That is the EastEnders. Do you have much to add about this, this final segment? No, because I was half asleep for it, like. Fair enough, mate. Um, so yeah, that's a week of EastEnders. Uh, I thought it was a pretty decent one. <sighs> I, like I said, they're they're still lengthening out the six stuff. It's still developing. It's halfway through the year. It stopped. It started. It's fine. It's how it is. It's had to be expected. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I. Probably not the most exciting week. I honestly, I don't really care about Sonia and Reese and Bianca. Uh, but yeah, I yeah, there we are. That's it. What do What do you think of the week, mate? I enjoyed the week. It was um, it was a good week. I enjoyed Karen being back from the scenes. I did watch before I yeah sleep. Um, so fucking. People are complaining why uh people people are complaining like why why they give her a Julia's theme if she left anyways? Ke Keanu is dead. Like it there is reason to be there. It's not like fucking she's coming back to just like do a shift at the fucking laundrette. Her son is dead. <laughs> why would they give her Julia's theme? She's not actually left. How many episodes has she had this year then? About five. Like Fucking come on, just shut up, please. But why? Why is she come back? Her son's dead. 
<laughs> Wait, he was found in April, wasn't he? He was found uh, in April. Yeah. Uh, how the fuck did it take two months for him to be buried? Uh, because I assume the police had to investigate the body. You know, do a post-mortem, figure out how he died. Check his I don't know if they did. They never talked about it, but... Plus, funerals in the UK usually take fucking ten times longer than... Like, if it was Ireland, he'd be fucking buried two days' time. <laughs> like, um, but, yeah, there we are. That's, that's my bit. Carry on, mate. I had to interrupt you. Oh, no, no, no. It's grand. It's grand. It's grand. I didn't ask you how your week was. I see it. I see how you responded. Fuck you. you yeah, know. he never does. He never does. How's your week been, huh? Okay. We're not doing it now. So we're over the two-hour mark. My Fuck you. The week was good, though. I did enjoy this week, as I said before. Uh, Reese and Sonya and Bianca being the main drama of the week. Ah, it's not really the most exciting week for me. I don't... Care. I'll think about it. I'll talk about it. Not really my favourite stuff, though. But obviously, people like people be like, "Oh, it's just the bloody George Night Show," and then they do a week with Sonya Reese and Bianca. I don't fucking care about these characters, though. It's like, well, you didn't want to be the George Night Show, but now it's not the George Night Show. It's shit because it's another character you don't like. Like, come on, <laughs> come on. But yeah, uh, anything else before we get into the awards? No, no, no. I think it's time for the awards. Ooh. Um, uh, what should we start first? The Keanu Taylor Award of well, Excellence. We saved that for the last since he's, been, since he's died. The underrated award. Reese. No, Debbie. Debbie. She said a lot of words. They were so good that they had to cut her lines out. They were that good. Honestly, it's been so long since we've seen her. I, I would have laughed if, obviously, they didn't recast her. But imagine she gets that gig. Like, how much do you reckon she she she's got a recurring like contract? She reckon she she just like lie in the bed and look dead, but not dead. Okay, seventy five quid <laughs> sound. <laughs> like, I, I just want to make the job, but I completely forgot about because we went on for two hours. I was going to make a job that every time she's we see her in the bed, her hair changes and her face changes, but but like in universe, nothing's changed. But we know something has changed. I oh, I would have loved that. I was like, Daddy. You 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 look bl- blonde to today, yeah. Mm. It's just ah, uh, I do. Uh, what would she be on? She'd have to be on poor appearance, wouldn't she? They can't have her yeah. on a full fat contract. There's <laughs> no, no fucking no. way she could be on a full fat contract. She'd have to be paid for her appearance. And I I bet she gets a fair salary for fucking sitting in that bed doing nothing. Fuck. I highly doubt she does. I say she get a, I say she gets a couple of grand, not, not a high pay. No, nah, definitely not. She should even... get like a hundred quid maximum. I don't think she would get fucking a hundred quid. Let's be honest, it's the BBC. You know, she she is acting after all. They aren't stupid with money. You say that. Well, well. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> they they wouldn't say they're stupid with money. <laughs> exactly. But there we are. Um, uh, underrated. Uh, uh, sexy Johnny. There we are. Um, who needs slapping down? Oh, it's Bianca. Bianca, yeah. <laughs> and without a doubt, the Keanu Appreciation Award of Excellence goes to Keanu for me. Um. I just, I it's got to go to Karen. I just, I've, she just, she's, she's been. Do you fucking mind? Mark Curtin's getting it. Fuck you, Curtin. No, uh, I just, I, I feel like you, you could put Karen in. You, you could like record her last line, and it would basically be everything she said for the last like six months. Like, <laughs> my boy, my boy's my boy. dead. Oh, like, ah, uh, yeah, fair enough. He is dead. You're not wrong. But also, for fuck's sake, like, can we just... Can we... Like, I recognise she needs to be here to further the story, and I respect it, because she's now seemingly playing the Shirley role. She's going to be like, hmm, Dean says he didn't do it. He says Linda did it. 
And obviously she's maybe going to take a look at Linda like, yo, what the fuck, you know? I don't trust a rapist, but also you have looked insanely shifty the entire time. <laughs> just the way you say that so nonchalantly, just like, I don't trust a rapist. Well, of course, I wouldn't trust them either as far as I can fucking throw them. <laughs> but uh, that's, but, that's, uh, that's the yeah, end that of the is, show. I'm going to leave That's this. the Watching Wilford podcast. Oh, wait, you're doing it. Am I? Let me uh, do it. I, I, I'm just going to leave this 10 seconds of silence. We're going to fade out with a bit of Julius theme and Keanu. Definitely then. not. I'll, I'll do it. I'll fucking do it. Don't you worry. Yeah, but yeah, but if you do it, I'm going to have to sit around for another two hours whilst you figure it out. Fuck you. You can do it. <laughs> it's only a Thursday. Who cares? <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, we just, I, well, I, I don't know if Piggy wanted a two hour version of the Watching Wolf podcast, but I made, I made it happen. <laughs> Ask my opinion on something. I've got, I'm full of beans. Yeah, it's just fucking, yeah, fucking here we go. 2000 word essay it. Don't you fucking worry. Done it in two seconds. Take some of that. But yes, uh, I hope people have been enjoying the content whilst we've been having a break, but. As of the end of this, we will simply get this video rendered out. Back to the fucking fun. So, obviously this has been fun. It's been a good podcast. Probably one of the best ones we've done in a while. Um, it's trying to upstage me. Um, but no, yeah, thank you for watching. The Watching Wolf of Podcast, episode number 76. Thank you for watching. If you want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description. We have a clips and a TikTok channel. And finally, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment what you thought about the week. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Join us on the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.